Lu Xun's aura was approaching right to his heart. This extremely dangerous feeling was like a flying arrow, but it could destroy him, or it could make him stronger. His heart changed at the speed of sound and shone like the dawning sun. Panic stuck like a lump in his throat. Even he himself couldn't foresee the outcome of this transformation. He rushed, which could cost him his life. A sword was stuck in his heart, but it was not dangerous to him, for the heart itself had accepted the sword. Fortunately waking up, Lu Xun could see right in front of his face the agitated Maunon Bei, who had not even taken her eyes off him during this entire time. The kitty cat's gaze really scared Lu Xun, who was already frightened. Maunon Bei was really worried about her little brother. First of all, she wondered if he had any strange feelings. Everything remained unchanged, especially Lu Xun's sense of humor. He felt as if the pussycat saw him as even more handsome, but he only embarrassed the unfortunate one with such a joke. Mao Nanbei easily recognized Lu Xun's peculiarity and didn't hesitate to tell him so out loud. Her excitement was not for nothing, because if Lu Xun failed, he might suffer a huge damage because of his impatience. Lu Xunyu should be patient and learn this technique slowly and gradually, or else there will be risks of dying. In order not to disturb his sister, Lu Xun tried to reassure her that everything was fine, although you could feel how tense he was. Without treasure and the right attributes, he still can't get anywhere, according to Mao Nanbei. However, Lu Xun did not intend to do anything, for he was really not at his best. Perhaps the risks for today were enough. But there's no reason to lie around. Lu Xun urgently needs to talk to Gu Xiaoman to avoid dying, or else Mao Nanbei will be left without his brother's delicious food. Big Sister didn't even need to say anything. She felt that Lu Xun had hidden his sword in his heart. It was amazing in that Lu used his human body for such a thing, which was simply unthinkable. No one had said a word in all this time. Mononbei was beginning to worry. What if something serious had happened to her brother? According to Gu Xiaoman, there was nothing wrong with him, but there was one but. As it turned out, the sword in the heart did not hit Lu Xun in its entirety. But if one could say it was a sprout that Lu Xun was now nurturing within himself, Lu remembered the feeling when the piece of sword appeared in his heart. But the saying, nurture the sword, was the first time he had heard it, just like Manon Bei. Looks like Lu Xun is the fruit of the sword, just like the ancestor of Zhang Shan. That means one thing, he won't be at peace. But how powerful is this sword? Be that as it may, being reminded that Lu Xun was only level 1 instead of level 10 wasn't very motivating. Only Lu Xun is not the kind of person who throws himself headlong into sadness, no. For him, it's a motivation to be better to do everything to be the best. Something had to be done already. So, Gu Xiaoman ordered her sister to find the master in the sword. Just why she needed a sword, the kitty was very much interested. Gu Xiaoman decided to take a chance and give this sword to her younger brother. Mao Nunbei was only too happy to help and ran off to find a sword for her precious brother. Should Lu Sun say something? Of course, Lu couldn't let his little sister go without his comments and asked him to find him a good and long sword. Lu Xun is completely out of control. Just when the opportunity arises, Mao Bei will gladly teach this little asshole a lesson. The boy himself couldn't believe that very soon he would finally have a sword of his own. He was excited. A little while later, Mao Bei was dragging two swords behind her, trying to get some breath on the way. Lu Xun can't stop waiting for his sister with the sword. Without going to him, Mao Bei was happy to show off the sword she had gotten. There were no small streams of wind coming from this sword, which took Lu Xun by surprise. Kitty decided to play with her little brother and see if Lu Xun could catch two swords at once. Mao Bei's games were not childish, and Lu Xun was not sure of his safety, for he might hurt himself. Unless he accepts the rules of the game and catches swords, <laughs> then his pretty face will be disfigured. Then then, beauty will no longer be his advantage. Suddenly Gu Xiaoman's arm stretched out to the side, spewing out a spark of energy. Although Lu Xun himself tried to stop the two swords, Big Sister decided not to take any chances and took control of the situation. In the end, all two swords were stuck into the ground, and Mao Nanbei just wanted to help her brother show up. But to remain a good sister, Mao Nanbei must continue to take care of her brother rather than trying to hurt him. Just how kind Gu Xiaoman was to Lu Xun amazed him to the point of tears. Gu Xiaoman knew that the time had come, and little brother needed to try. Behind them were two swords. The one on the left was a black-bladed middle-grade weapon. The one on the right, a purple emperor, a magical first-class weapon. Lu Xun needed to choose the right sword for himself. His choice settled on one that was weaker, his hand reaching for the black blade. When it was in his hands, it didn't feel like anything and everything seemed to be fine. But once he gripped the sword hilt harder, the sword began to shake and emit light, and soon it flew out of his hands as if it felt something foreign. The sword returned to its place, but why? 
And how was that even possible? Is it really all about the sword that is in the heart? Does it prevent Lu Shun from being able to use other swords? But it's worth a second try. Lu Shun decided to take on the Purple Emperor. This time, it should work out. But it didn't work. The sword flew out of Lu Shun's hands just like last time, preventing him from holding on for even a second. Lu Xun began to assume that his sword was jealous of other swords altogether. Gu Xiao Man seemed to have guessed something, but only decided to speak up now. What did the older sister think? She never said so, but instead offered Lu Xun her sword. As soon as she pulled her barrette out of her hair, it immediately turned into a real sword. Lu Xun's system couldn't determine the true level of the sword. What should he do now? Lu Xun accepted this sword from his elder sister's hand. A large aura formed around them, enveloping not only their bodies but also the surrounding area. This time, it wasn't the sword that flew off, but Lu Xun. The sword was very strong and pushed him outside the trees. With a rumble, the guy fell to the grass. The girls had to close their eyes to not feel that pain. It seems that the sword in his heart doesn't even accept his elder sister's sword. Would he never be able to hold a real sword of steel in his hands? It was terribly annoying, but suddenly an idea popped into his head that he wanted to test right now. First of all, Kitty asked her brother to behave normally. Who knows what's in his mind? He's a madman. Maunumbei was very impatient herself. She was very curious to know why on earth he couldn't hold any sword. So she circled around Lu Xun, hoping to get an answer. Guessing why was sad, but quite possible. Could it be that Lu Xun was born unable to do this? Maunumbei looked a little sad as she saw her brother upset. They had become good friends over the years, so she sympathized with him. Kitty believed that they would definitely find a way out of this situation, and tried to cheer Lu Xun up. Master is all-powerful. When Maunumbei was a little kitty, he managed to transform her. Except for ugly men, the Lord is nice to everyone. Realizing that Maunumbei had said too much, she suddenly fell silent and became embarrassed. Lu Xun didn't ask anything, only stared intently at his little sister, trying to figure out what she was implying. Lu Xun looked too attractive, which embarrassed Mao Nunbei, so as not to show her embarrassment and admiration. Sis immediately turned away. There was time, but something had to be decided. Therefore, Gu Xiaoman suggested that the two of them fight right now. It seems that Big Sister wanted to see how Lu Xun's sword would react to the battle. Her Big Sister's eyes glittered. It was obvious that this sly kitty was up to something. Realizing this, Gu Xiaoman asked to bring Lily's apprentice. Of course, Maunumbei reacted skeptically, but she couldn't disobey. Not five minutes later, Maunumbei and Lily were already there. Lily was only too happy to see her beloved Lu Xun, or to be more precise, Great Uncle Master. However, Uncle Master himself did not hide his joy at the sight of a familiar face. A smile immediately formed on his sad face at the sight of Lily. Maunumbei didn't even have time to explain to Lily the whole point of the case and why she had brought the girl here. Without waiting long, Lu Xun immediately got down to business and asked for Lily to strike him with her sword. He seemed serious, but Lily felt as if he had a fever. The girl decided to check his body temperature and carefully touched her palm to his forehead. But at the same instant he became serious and gently took the girl's palm, repeating his request again. After realizing that Lu Xun was indeed adequate, Lily herself became more serious, intending to put all her strength into her strike. Lu Xun was only happy about this mood, he wished that the girl would hit him as hard as she could. Lily begins to move slowly, preparing to attack. Her steps are light and precise, her every move deliberate. The boy stands alert, but he doesn't even think about defending himself. And then, suddenly, Lily makes a swift and powerful lunge with her sword. Her movement is elegant, yet strong and precise towards the target. The sword flies towards Lu Xun, leaving behind a trail of air current. She executed a swift and powerful strike, her sword swiftly slicing through the air releasing all the energy put into that strike. Lu Xun stood still like this. He didn't even think of putting up a block or defending himself in any way. Now we can see that this guy doesn't even need to block anyone's blows, because the sword that's in his heart does it automatically instead. Lily flew a decent distance away from Lu Xun. Perhaps nothing would have happened to her, but Mao Nonbei caught her in time, not even letting her bruise. It was now clear that the sword was preventing Lu Xun from receiving damage from other swords to him. The only question that remained was, how was this possible? Lu Xun felt great, if not at the level of a deity. After all, he could now expand territories without a sword. But why doesn't Lu Xun care at all? He has a sword in his heart, and he doesn't even know how to use it. What's the problem? Only Lu Xun saw the point of this. If he can't even use his sword, then how does the power appear in him? Create a territory without swords and then fight in close combat? A sword is only good when it is used. 
Being unarmed is useless, and having a cheap sword is useless too, so it's a waste of time. This was clearly not in line with Lu Xun's personality and status as a demon. Was there no way to do it without a sword? Alternatively, Lu Xun could try using the sixth chakra. Focusing on his sensations and making the right movements, his two fingers began to create energy. Was this energy translating what kind of sword was in his heart? Gu Xiaoman confirmed that it was indeed sword energy. Lily, who hadn't seen anything like this before, marveled. Mao Nunbei, on the other hand, was indignant because her brother didn't even have a sword. But what use is such a short sword aura? Short and possibly weak, not as strong as a long sword. The most unbearable thing for a man is when others say that he is small. Lu Xun was annoyed at this and decided to himself that he must improve his sword today. Realizing what Lu Xun was planning to do, Big Sister objected at first, but then suggested trying something else. With one hand, she lifted up the many objects that were lying around her. Lily started to worry a lot because she realized that the older one would want to throw all those rocks, sticks at Lu Xun. After all, his pretty face might get hurt. In one move, Gu Xiaoman pointed all the items towards Lu Xun. Mao Nonbei was ready to back up her little brother, because if he didn't know how to use it, there was no way she was going to let him get hurt. Kitty was in no hurry to go to his defense, but was careful on the backup. Meanwhile, rocks were flying towards him at high speed. Lu Xun didn't even seem to be intimidated by this. He belonged to the petty generation who had reached the heights of physical exercise. Concentrating, Lu Xun with his one hand kicks all these objects in the air. His movements are fast, precise, and efficient as he reacts to each flying object with an excellent sense of time and space. The sword was really short, but it was very strong. Even Gu Xiaoman recognized that the sword aura was really not bad. But Mao Nanbei didn't look impressed at all. Briefly rejoicing, Lu Xun could no longer control his body. The sword aura sucked out all of his energy. In this instant, he had lost too much. Lu Xun's cultivation level was too low to withstand such a strain. Lu Xun was unconscious. Mao Nanbei as the elder sister was supposed to carry him to his dwelling. Dragging him down the stairs, the kitty still carried him to his bed, even though he was bald on the back of his head. If she wasn't afraid of him freezing, she wouldn't have brought Lu Xun here. Mao Nunbei felt that Lu Xun shouldn't fight it. Did he really think that his loved ones were dead? No matter who dares to offend Lu Xun, the little sister will cut off the head of the offender, but she will not let her brother be offended. Hearing meowing from the courtyard, Mao Nunbei was distracted from her thoughts. It was a meow she would recognize among a thousand meows. It was Blackie. With the hope of seeing this cat, she immediately ran outside. Blackie stood right in front of her as if waiting for her. Tears of happiness began to glisten in Mao Nunbei's eyes. So happy was she to see the kitty. As soon as she tried to touch her kin as it suddenly disappeared. The happiness in his eyes was replaced by sadness and inability to do anything. Suddenly she realized that it was probably just a hallucination. Time flew by. It was already the middle of fall. Once again it would soon be time for family reunions. But what about the Mao Nunbei family? After struggling to wake up, Lu Xun wished his little sister a good morning. All the while he was thinking about his sword, most likely a sword that, not often used, would be devastated. Mao Nanbei had been in sorrow since last night and said hello to her brother quite dryly. Lu Xun didn't need to say anything. He could already see that something was wrong with his little sister. Usually at times like this, she wanted to eat something, but not today. Her brother lowered himself gently into her chair, wondering what had happened to her. She clearly needed to share her sadness. So she began by asking if little brother knew why Mao Nunbei found herself in Weicheng. Lu Xun could only assume what he had seen. And now he assumed that she had appeared in that place for the sake of killing a hundred ghosts. He was essentially right. But did he also know the reason for her intentions? Except he didn't know that anymore. Cultivation didn't seem to be the main goal. But for the sake of gaining experience points, it could be. The main purpose of killing ghosts for Mao Nunbei was purely for revenge. Mao Nanbei was originally a kitsune who lived in the forest on the outskirts of the city. But once she took her form, she was forced to return. Her homeland is on Wildcat Mountain, outside of the city. Her friends and family once lived there before Mao Nanbei became a demon. But in an instant, everything changed. She still remembers that terrible picture, where all her relatives were killed in their own house. This was done by the ghost of the mountain, who became the lord. After that, Mao Nanbei's world completely collapsed. She had the power, and now she wished to destroy anyone who was even indirectly connected to the death of her family, and especially the main ghost. Mao Nanbei used strategy and agility to emerge victorious in the battle with the ghost. 
she was able to use tactics to avoid the ghost's attacks and deliver a fatal blow at a vulnerable moment. When the ghost was killed, the demoness saw the ghost's body split into several pieces, turning into a hundred ghosts. It was at that moment that Maunan Bei met Lu Xun and Lily while she was hunting for that hundred. Lu Xun now realized what was going on. Today is the mid-autumn festival, and Maunan Bei seems to be missing his home. Lu Xun still remembered his earthly life and of course his own sister whom he still loved. One day, his sister had also been treated very unfairly, wanting to help at least Maunan Bei! Lu Xun took her hand! And with a smile he led the way without even saying where. They came to the kitchen. Mao Nunbei should wait a little longer, and her brother will bring back her happiness. In the past, when Lu Xun's family was not wealthy and his sister was in a bad mood, he would make this for her. Unfortunately, there was no white sugar, but powdered sugar would come to the rescue. The sister had no idea what kind of happiness Lu Xun was talking about, and thought that he was completely crazy. But Mao Nunbei did not object to his cooking, but watched him carefully as he did the cooking. Half an hour later, Mao Nunbei can soon taste another of Lu Xun's creations. But first, she has to use her spiritual power to cool down this dish. Carefully and without even touching Mao Nanbei used cooling. Once the dish is cooled, we can all witness this miracle. Lu Xun was happy to serve the kitty his specialty which smelled sweet, bringing a smile to his face. Mao Nanbei had never had to see something like this before. The dessert looked delicious. Breaking off a piece of dessert with a spoon, Sis began to taste it. I could already see in her eyes that she was definitely enjoying the dessert. All of Lushun's dishes were delicious, and this dessert in particular. Brother made it when it was needed, for which Mononbei was very grateful. In order to not have time to eat everything, Sis offered the dessert to Lushun as well. But he made this dessert just for her, and he's willing to make more if she wants it. If so, she'll be happy to eat it all by herself. Suddenly, the thought flashed through Lushun's mind that Sis probably doesn't know what it feels like to be touched. What if I tried to touch her? But if she freaks out about it? Lucian decided to take a chance after all and gently rubbed her cat ear. She didn't seem to freak out, but on the contrary, she was very pleased. She thanked her brother for his gentle treatment and attention. They were a family now, Lu Xun was happy to admit it out loud. If so, why not ask for more of this wonderful dessert too? Five masters were heading down the long steps, debating about something. Someone has been in a demonic clan for a long time, should he be sent to a secret location where all the clan members should gather? Be that as it may, the Sovereign Lord felt it was necessary to visit there sooner or later. This place is the starting point of all newcomers to the Demon Clan, as well as the perfect place for all sorts of creatures. Instead of creepy, but it makes any demon stronger. Sitting outside Mount Bay, the first thing she noticed was Shen Yan, but she wasn't even surprised by the Master's arrival. Shen Yan, along with his siblings, wished for a good mid-autumn festival. Lucian seeing the head and elders also greeted them while Mao Nonbei was still busy with her dessert. They didn't exchange pleasantries for long. The elder got down to business asking for an opportunity to ask a question. Surprisingly, none of the artisans even took gifts. This greatly angered Lu Xun after all who comes to visit and even congratulate empty-handed. It was definitely very impolite, but Lu Xun had no intention of imitating them and offered to taste his dessert. The dessert was similar to tofu, but looked a little different. The masters kept trying to figure out what kind of dessert it was because it didn't look like dessert either. But it is useless to look for a long time. You have to try, which is what the masters did. Sovereign Lord tasted incredible in this dessert, and he didn't even hide the fact that he liked this dessert. The masters lived 200 to 300 years, but never tried anything like this. They were left with the question, how did Lu Xunyu manage to perfect this dish? The Sovereign Lord was willing to share even a spirit stone for the secret of this recipe. Lu Xun's eyes gleamed with a sly smile. For if done right, one could beat these masters. Lu Xun decided to use the tactic of sincerity. But there was a catch to it as well. He thought, What kind of secrets could there be in the demon clan if they were all from the same clan? However, he wasn't surprised that this dish had attracted them. The other side is that everything now depends on the sincerity of the masters. That's how it is. Sincerity was too little. Lu Xun gives them a recipe, but would their facial expressions really stay the same? The Lord was suddenly confused and decided to clarify what Lu Xun wanted. Lu Xun gives the recipe to whoever he sees more sincerity from. In the future, whoever gets the recipe can use it for their own purposes. The benefits of the Lu Xun Yu dish didn't even need to be mentioned as the dish had been tasted. The elders thought about it, because if they promoted this dish, it would definitely become popular and they would be successful. 
and then this recipe could be used to train as many followers as possible. The elder thought it over and decided not to be greedy and pay a thousand spirit stones. After all, he was the one who was supposed to get the recipe. The bids went up. Someone decided to pay 1,015 and then 1,501. The situation was gaining momentum, but this only pleased Lu Xun because everything was going in his favor. The woman was willing to pay 2,000 stones for such beauty. 2,000 stones would be enough for a magical weapon. The Sovereign Lord didn't understand why they were starting to bother for some recipe. If 2,000 spirit stones were exchanged, it would be around a few tens of thousands of points. And this recipe impressed them. Lu Xun could definitely achieve more. 2,000 spirit stones, but won't anyone pay more? No one raised bids on the second account either, and the woman was already rejoicing in her victory in this auction. The Sovereign Lord thought everyone was foolish, for one should strive for simpler things. But what was he striving for? Meanwhile, Lily approached. She was looking interestedly at the dessert in Maunan Bay's hands. The Sovereign Lord noticed her but didn't say anything to her. He was shaking with anger, with reluctance to make such a high bet and at the same time wanting that very recipe. The auction was coming to an end already the third count had arrived but someone stopped Lu Xun. Shen Yan, who thought everyone was stupid for betting such high stakes, had just bet 3,000 stones. Now the elders thought he was crazy. Maybe he realized that, but he really wanted to get that recipe, and most likely impress Lily. Everyone knew Sovereign Lord as a rather frugal and greedy demon. So why did he decide to squander so much today? Since when did he become so fond of sweets? This time, Lu Xun decided not to procrastinate and immediately sold his recipe to the Sovereign Lord. 3,000 spirit stones. Now the Lord will only have to eat twice a day. But on the other hand, it's just a small thing for a Lord, isn't it? Lu Xun was happy to congratulate the Sovereign Lord on his successful purchase. Shen was both upset and happy at the same time, just as long as he could get the prescription back to him sooner. From now on, the future of the secret recipe is entirely in Shen Yan's hands. Noticing the snide smiles of his companions, the Lord inquired what these tricksters were up to. They had been on friendly terms with the Sovereign Lord for years, so why wouldn't he share the secret recipe with them? And in return, as a thank you, the elders are willing to toss 500 spirit stones to Sheng each. It sounded very profitable, thus the Lord would be able to recoup all his expenses. He could pass the recipe to the elders and then secretly refine it. But wouldn't Shen lose everything in the end? Fortunately, there were other ideas so not all is lost. How could a Sovereign Lord share such a treasure? What nonsense they say. Such a response made the elders even more wary. Would the Sovereign Lord keep this recipe for the rest of his days? In exchange for the gems, Lu Xun still received his long-awaited glasses. And the Lord decided to remind him that in addition to the congratulations from the Mid-Autumn Festival, there was something else. Just what did he mean by that? The elders hoped that Lu Xun would one day climb the Tibetan mountain with them, which was the secret place of the Demon Clan. It was a place where followers could refine their strength, the elders had already even placed bets. They were very interested in what level weapon the brother would get. To prevent his colleague from spilling any more unnecessary information, the old man quickly covered his mouth. It turns out that there, the magic weapon finds its master by itself. Only Lu Xun could have come any other day but today. After all, he has time with his family scheduled for tonight. All the people were celebrating the mid-autumn festival and enjoying this evening launching lanterns into the sky. Lu Xun prepared his best dishes as usual and served them to his favorite girls, who enjoyed the taste of these dishes. Mao Bei was surprised that her brother was willing to go to the Tibetan mountain, for that meant there was no turning back. Only he didn't know it, and he clarified what it meant, as it turned out. After the death of a cultivator, the power of the soul does not dissipate, but remains at the place of burial. When followers climb the Tibetan mountain, past generations are observed by them, but should not interfere. But if a cultivator found themselves in the acceptance of a magic weapon, they would feel insulted. In other words, Lu Xun would not be able to go back in this case and would be dragged into this wasteland. Therefore, Gu Xiaomen suggested to think things over well so that there wouldn't be such consequences. As usual, the sibling felt confident and tried to reassure his sisters that everything would be fine. But doesn't he want to get himself a magic weapon Qi Blade? Mao Nonbei advised against it, or else there might be trouble. Lu Xun was definitely unwilling to give up on such an opportunity so he decided to act on intuition. His confidence continued to delight Lily, who listened and ate in silence. Realizing that sibling wouldn't give up on this venture, Gu Xiaoman presented him with something. Lu Xun didn't know what it was, even the system couldn't recognize this thing. It was a little gift to my brother from my sisters. There were only five of them, 
This was the last one left. Only how to use it Lu Xun didn't know and would have to find out later. Together with Sovereign Lord Lu Xun, he traveled to the Tibetan mountain the next day. It is strictly forbidden for ordinary people to climb the Tibetan mountain. After all, their predecessors are buried on the mountain. Suddenly the boys stopped near a house. The house was old and decrepit, but it was still standing, and someone must have taken care of it. The Sovereign Lord knew that this was the guardian house of the mountain, the man who follows the chapter for a long time. It was as if the old man had been expecting his guests and was not surprised by their arrival. Lu Xun immediately saw the old man as an elder. It would be inappropriate to say that he had nothing to do with the demon clan. The Sovereign Lord was pleased to introduce a newly accepted follower to the elder. When the elder turned his attention to Lu Xun, his face was not filled with his previous indifference. For some reason, he was surprised at Lu Xun. Lu Xun did not lose sight of that look. It seemed to him as if the old man knew him and had been watching him for a long time. The elder tilted his head in respect as if to welcome the new guest. Suddenly there was a new luck value on the information board, and then another point of luck appeared. In his past life, Lu Xun had not been able to achieve much success. But in this life, he had a chance to do as he wished. Not without surprise, the guy noticed that this elder was indeed some sort of legendary person, which was a bit odd. Very strange pictures were appearing in his brain. For some reason at this point, his brain was out of his control and kept generating new strange pictures. The elder opened the way to the Tibetan mountain. It was time for Lu Xun to go. The Sovereign Lord was just waiting for Lu Xun to enter this place and smiled ecodotically. For him, this mission had been accomplished. There was no turning back for Lu Xun. Meanwhile, the elders were having fun and betting on Lu Xun. They decided to bet on which magic weapon Lu Xun would get. The place as expected was foggy and deserted, with only rocks everywhere and swords stuck in the ground. The grandeur of the Tibetan mountain couldn't help but fascinate Lu Xun no matter how cynical he was. This place could either destroy him or make him a hundred times stronger. There were countless different weapons here. Which one would Lu Xun get? Lu Xun dared to assume that the right blade was located at the top of the mountain. Magical weapons choose their own masters. Could it be that no weapon would choose them at all? Lu Xun continued walking down the steps, passing many swords that reacted to him in some way. All those swords are starting to make sounds, which means they all chose Lu Xun. In the midst of this bustle, the sword that grew in his heart also responded. It made it clear that the choice was not that easy. Lucian felt that these blades were not suitable for him. Something else was needed. Just what? Even the elders recognized that this guy was good, as absolutely all the blades had chosen him. He could have chosen any of those swords. Only Lucian didn't even look at them. He didn't even look at a single sword. He doesn't want those blades, then what does he want? His sword and his heart did not want Lucian to touch anything at all just like a jealous girl, but most likely something good is above. As Lu Xun climbed higher and higher, a pleasant feeling enveloped him. A magic weapon of this level was equivalent to a treasure. Lu Xun was about to head towards the most valuable magic weapon. The head had originally accepted 12 followers, only a small fraction of them remained. The path was quite difficult, which wasn't surprising. Lu Xun stepped in very cautiously but boldly. From the side, something caught his attention. It was a cape called First Date. Looks like she picked Lu Zun too. The First Date cape was also Lu Xun's favorite outfit. He didn't expect to see this cape and was very happy about this appearance. At that time, he was very satisfied with this equipment. It couldn't be better. This cape met all of Lu Xun's needs. And now it was extremely cute that she was now reacting to her past master. She reacted to Lu Xun, but no more attention was given. Lu Xun remembered her, but the cape didn't remember him. What could be worse than this? Lu Xun was completely angry and upset that the cape didn't remember him. After all, he had clearly not expected such a thing. But there was an upside. After all, he still managed to find a first date here in the secret realm. It turns out, not all was lost. Which means we can move on. If you follow all the rules, you can even survive being here. The higher Lu Xun kept going, the thicker the fog was, and it was harder to see the road. But after a while, he rose to the purple level, where weapons were of great value. It was rather strange, for he had never even heard of such a thing existing. With wonder in their eyes, the elders continued to watch their ward through the mirror. It had been a long time since they'd seen such a thing too, which they were actually surprised about. Suddenly appearing, the girl drew everyone's attention. She was addressing the 11th brother, with a proposal. If he won the game, they could get married. Young Yue Heshen decided to clarify, did the girl really want this? Heaven itself will bear witness to their dispute. The girl was serious. 
and the elders don't give food, but give spectacle. It seemed as if they supported every event. May the heavenly Tao bless this dispute. Yue Heshen decided to make the throw first. Everyone was eagerly watching to see what would fall out. It was sad as only two points fell out. Finally, it was the girl's turn. Her eyes were definitely burning with enthusiasm. Did she really have a plan? Otherwise, why would she give herself in marriage? She had known Yue's liking for years. If she threw out a one, it would mean the heavens were okay with their union. Only the die stopped at a six. You and the elders watched in amazement. Was fate not favoring them? If fate is against this union, the girl will become more persistent and put her hand to make fate still take their side. With her own strength and without anyone noticing, she flipped the die to one, making her intentions clear. Yue was thrilled. He couldn't believe this was his chance. The girl had lost on one hand, but on the other she had achieved her goal and was only too happy to recognize Yue's win. Everyone was happy and supportive of the 11th brother. It was a really decent game. And today, their alliance would be cemented. It was raining that day, but Yue Heshan felt sunny. At the purple level, no weapons chose Lu Shun, which was strange. As soon as he thought about it, suddenly the blade reacted to the Traveler. It wasn't a simple blade. It was the Storm's pacification. Sister's Blade. This sword was second only to the Kui Blade. If Lu Shun were to take it, it would be something. Lu Shun himself saw that this dagger wasn't that bad since he recognized the main character in this world, didn't he? Only, it was unknown if his sword would allow him to take that blade. He couldn't feel anything. So the only thing left to do was to check it out or he wouldn't recognize it that way. Well, I've been there. We should get started. As soon as Lu Shun's hand touched the hilt of the blade, the sword reacted in the same instant, spreading a powerful aura around it. Divinely, Lu Shun found himself in a completely different place and biome. It was cold, and there was snow everywhere. And there further down in the snow was this blade stuck in the snow. Is this really the dream world of this sword? Violet rank weapons weren't that easy, if only by this teleportation ability. Sis once used the pacification of storms to calm the winds, hence the name. In those years, the sister was very talented, but the evil was more deadly. Shen Yan admired the girl's skills and talent, because there were no demons like her at all. Such girls were one in a million. But in front of that dragon, even the elders were helpless. No matter who tried to resist it, it was difficult and even impossible. The Sovereign Lord remembers how many were injured and dead in that battle. If Sis was still there, the position of clan head could no longer belong to Shen Yang. After all, the Lord knew that there were people much more capable than him. It would be great if Lu Xun succeeded and gained his sister's abilities. Somehow, the Sovereign Lord sincerely wished this. Literally just now, Lu Xun had advanced a lot, but the illusions around him were very much in the way. The blade wasn't standing still, it was constantly moving around, but this only made Lu Xun more eager to obtain it. He was willing to go to great lengths to obtain it. After being patient and waiting for the right moment, Lu Xun grabbed the blade so tightly that it would not fly out again. The blade really didn't fly out, but Lu Xun flew all the way over the mountains. Is this blade stronger than our hero? But now Lu Xun looked even frustrated and a little angry. If this blade had told him right away that he wouldn't go to him, he wouldn't have had to lie around now. Many elders were betting that Brother would still be able to obtain the storm pacification. After all, this blade had even been chosen by Lu Xun. So what was the matter? Has his opinion about Master changed? Our hero was not going to be upset for long, because there were so many blades around. There was bound to be another blade that would choose him. But most importantly, very soon Lu Xun will be able to reach the Qi Blade. One only needs to reach the top. The sword of a demon clan follower is not only a weapon, but also a symbol of her strength and devotion to the clan. Its blade is made of a dark metal that seems to be imbued with magic and reflects light to create a glittering shadow effect. And the hilt is decorated with a blue gemstone and magical patterns. In Lu Xun's presence, the sword didn't even think of moving or making any sounds. Calming Storm somehow reacted, although I will throw Lu Xun away at the end, but the blade key doesn't give any hope at all. The strangest part is that it lies just like that, but why? What's the matter? Besides, the thing donated by Gu Xiaoman, maybe it has something to do with the blade key. This time the sword began to react and shake. Once the hesitation started, Lu Xun made the decision to grab this sword. Still holding the stone in his hand, Lu Xun prepared to grab the sword hilt. Even if he gave up his life, he would still receive the Qi Blade. This was Lu Xun's will. With difficulty, but he grabbed that sword, 
he was so enveloped by this dark aura that the blade of the greatest demons contained. No matter how hard he tried to hold onto that sword, Lushun was defeated once again, and the sword flung him away like a foreign body. And the Qi Blade itself remained in its place as it had been before. Touching this sword could really cost Lu Xun his life. Just a moment more, and he would die. His life force was very low. He must definitely recover. Even though the Blade Qi rejected him, Lu Xun was not going to give up on that. For nothing was impossible for him. His goal was half accomplished, for at least the sheath of the sword did not resist him. For that, he was counting on at least some bonuses from the Elder. But there was some sort of breakdown. Or was it a bonus that he didn't die? While Lu Xun was lying on the grass, an old man came up to him with a smile looking at the boy. Perhaps Lu Xun was expecting to see anyone but the Elder, so he was surprised by his presence. As was his habit, he answered nothing, but smiled and nodded contentedly. When the boy wanted to pick up the sword sheath, the Elder stopped him with his staff. And for a reason. With this, he wanted to demonstrate how the ropes from the sheath were attached to this staff. Lu Xun had seen something like this for the first time and could guess that this blade had a spirit. The old man still answered nothing but asked to look further, making it clear with his gestures. Suddenly, a hunch surfaced in Lu Xun's mind that this blade and this sheath could have belonged to the Elder. He was sure that this was the case, but that turned out to be an incorrect assumption. Lu Xun could also assume that the old man had made this cover himself, which was quite possible and it turned out to be a correct assumption. The elder nodded contentedly and showed with all his appearance that he was proud of the job. Lu Xun seemed to be fascinated by this old man. The blade was truly legendary, and right in front of him stood the person who made this blade. The guy must have been in seventh heaven from such joy. For some reason, the old man looked sadly at the young man and made a gesture with his hand. And then the elder patted him on the shoulder as if he were his own silly little child. At this moment, Lu Xun felt something as if the Elder had entrusted him with something important. But it didn't make him feel any particular joy, but rather sadness. They were not allowed to be alone for long. Loud shouts of congratulations were heard from the sky. This whole time, Lu Xun had been lying on the grass and still hadn't managed to get up. He liked all this bureaucracy on the one hand, but when he is presented in this light, not so much. A sword spirit was a top-level magical weapon. The Sovereign Lord thought that Lu Xun was very lucky. Lu was well aware of the price of this weapon. After all, he had to endure much more to obtain the Spirit of the Sword. He couldn't get up himself. He had no strength at all, so he sought help from the Elders who hovered over him with a smile. After a while, he was finally in his dwelling. Lu Xun was happy to receive the purple rank weapon. It suited him very well, and the size was just right. The blade scabbard also possessed the useful properties of sealing and power accumulation, not just beauty. The best weapon Lu Xun had managed to obtain was only a blue-ranked weapon. Back then, he was at the 60th level and had reached the limit of his abilities. And this blade Lu Xun didn't even need to dream about, he wouldn't be able to use it anyway. But now he had skills that could play a big role and help him in the future. The seal seals the blade and also blocks everything. Lu Xun Yu was reminded of something in his realm of freedom. Force accumulation is the careful gathering of all the power in oneself and then using it abruptly. It will help him to be inspired, accumulate a lot of energy, and release it at the right moment. But something was clearly wrong, something was escaping Lu Xun's attention. Namely, that hoarding wouldn't help him at all. He didn't have a blade, so this property is useless without it. You can panic for a long time, but you have to think about what to do. Maybe Qi energy can act as a blade? Lu Xun's strength had recovered a bit, so he decided to try this theory right away. There didn't seem to be anything terrible or any opposition from the sheath so far. It looked normal and even great. While the others would bear their blades, Lu Xun would be able to use his sword. Little by little, the energy from the blade was absorbed into the scabbard. Lu Xun was happy that everything was going right. No matter how satisfied he was, his strength was taking its toll on this case. After half an hour, Lu Xun was completely exhausted. Who would have thought that he would be so tired of some sheaths? With six more days until the players arrive, he should go down slowly, or... Lu Xun will still be able to meet his sister, at least to see her from afar. Such an innocent dream, but at the same time, little fulfillment. To see his own sister, even from a distance. Lu Xun would probably give anything to see her happy face one more time. Sister also played this game, but her online does not exceed an hour a day, she is clearly not addicted to it and Lu Xun decided to play this game to find common topics of conversation. Will Lu Xun be able to see his sister? 
He loved her very much and cared for her as much as he could. Lu Xun tried to replace her parents, become her best friend and make her the happiest girl in the world. But in an instant he had disappeared and now he could do nothing for her. The only thing that warmed his thoughts was the knowledge that financially he had provided for her. Life in this game had gotten better, he was treated well here, but it was nothing compared to his sister's company. Those thoughts came back to him every night, if not every day. And that's how he fell asleep. This night, he fell asleep the same way. But he found himself together, where he had been once before. That desolate and dark place where he would gain his strength by fighting this girl, his older sister. The blade shadow that Gu Xiaoman was chasing after. It's still here. If Lu Xun tried to leave, the same thing that happened last time would happen. He simply won't be able to sleep, and she will chase him in his dreams. The shadow didn't give Lu Xun even a chance to realize where he was. Just like last time, it mercilessly attacked the unfortunate man with its sword. But the boy quickly realized that he was dealing with his older sister's shadow. With Lu Xun's experience in fighting shadows, he could be more cunning. This time he decided to use his sword and beat back her attacks with it. The first time was a success, and the attack didn't hit him. This sword was long, just like Lu Xun wanted it to be. It was much longer than he had imagined. This sword could even wrap around its axis. This gave Lu Xun a definite advantage, but his joy was short-lived. The enemy was strong, and Lu Xun should not relax after successfully defeating the attack. The next shadow attack went straight for Lu Xun's forehead. No pity for this guy, or else he wouldn't get stronger. There was definitely progress in the battle. This time he had only died a few dozen times, which was already better than last time. Fortunately the battle was over and Lu Xun was able to wake up as if after a nightmare, but he was not even allowed to rest in reality. There was a persistent knock on the door. It was very early now, but there was no choice but to get up and receive the guest. Still yawning from the sleepless night, Lu Xun met the Sovereign Lord on the doorstep. The Lord was very nice and reminded him that today was the day to come down from the mountain. Shen Yin was proud to report that he had arranged for someone to accompany Lu Xun. Judging from the timing, everything should happen today. Lu Xun thought that Lily should go, and there was no mystery. But expectations are not met in reality, he must be accompanied by Mu Jun Yang. Lu Xun didn't understand why Lily wouldn't go with him. To him, it seemed like an everyday thing, and he didn't expect him to go with someone else. As it turned out, Lily had already descended the mountain even earlier than Lu Xun himself. But when it happened, no one knew, and that included the Sovereign Lord. It was very suspicious that the mentor didn't know when his follower left the mountain. It was something to ponder about. And Lu Xun Yu especially thought it was strange. Anyway, Lu Xun has to leave soon. Mu Yong Yang seems to be waiting for him. But before they set off, the Sovereign Lord offered to find out what the bead was telling them. And in order to find out, they need a drop of blood. This was Lu Xun's first time encountering such a ritual, but he didn't interject and gave his drop of blood. There was no such prop in the past either, so what could this mean? Which means this, if Lu Xun gets into trouble, the bead will turn black. All to find out if Lu Xun is dead or not. No wonder he never came across this item in the past either. How thoughtful of the Lord. The Sovereign Lord bowed and specified that Mu Yun Yang was waiting for Lu Xun at the top of the mountain. However, his arrival was too ordinary. If Sovereign Lord doesn't want to practice with Lu Xun, will the sisters have a different opinion? Before descending the mountain, Lu Xun felt it was necessary to say goodbye to his sisters who had taken care of him during this time. He didn't know when he would be able to return, so saying goodbye was imperative. Mao Nunbei tensed up, for this meant that no one would feed her such a delicious meal tonight. For thinking out loud like that, Mao Nunbei received another bump from her sister. Gu Xiaoman was more polite and wished her brother to return as soon as possible. This was what Lu Xun was aiming for, to return faster than his sister was satisfied. Lu Xun was about to leave when he was called out by one of the sisters. Mao Nunbei gave her instructions. Lu Xun should fight if he doesn't know if he will definitely defeat his opponent. But if he doesn't, it's better to let him run. There's no shame in it. Brother should definitely come back and prove to Gu Xiaoman that he had handled everything. Lu Xun agreed with the pussycat's words and ran away. Those words warmed him like nothing else. There was nothing better than knowing that you were expected, and expected sooner rather than later. And at the top of the mountain, all the female fans, including Mu Jun Yang, were already waiting for their idol. Lu Xun's sharp eyes immediately noticed that the woman had lost weight. This was true, as Mu Yun Yang's strength had increased and her fat had become less. 
Lucian was happy to congratulate the woman, the more he embarrassed her, but they had obviously been delayed and should leave already. They were going to fly as usual, on a flying blade that Mu Yunyang could barely hold, and then there was Lu Xun, but there was nothing to do. One foot of Lu Xun, one foot of Mu Junyang, and so the boys would reach their desired destination. The blade was sturdy and magical so he could hold, though he had to fly in discomfort. While they were flying, Lu Xun noticed that the sky had specifically changed and became much darker, even though it was sunny not long ago. Lu Xun was in pitch darkness, but he was still holding onto Mu Yunyang's shoulder. The woman was completely calm. Couldn't she see anything? A familiar half-sword aura, Lu Xun could feel it with his entire body. But he didn't understand why it was enveloping him right now. Something was flying straight in their direction, but the woman still remained calm and kept a straight course. Seeing this, Lu Xun started to panic and asked Mu Yunyang to speed up or at least get away from this strike. But the woman only glanced at her companion like he was crazy. And at Lu Xun, something flew straight at his chest. Lu Xun didn't have any way to dodge it. As it turned out, it was just an illusion. But what Lu Xun was shouting was real. Mu Yun Yang had no idea what he was talking about. He wasn't going to explain what he had just felt. But he knew for sure something had happened. Looks like an angry clone just got caught in Lu Xun's ring. He couldn't do anything about it because he was caught off guard. Just now, our hero had gotten 1% opposition. Even that 1% was enough. But maybe the reason he wasn't given another weapon was because the sisters had foreseen everything. If that's the case, that 1% might still come in handy. No one knows what awaits them on the way down the mountain. Finally, the guys have left the Tibetan mountain. Now we have to decide where to go now. Lu Xun assumed that Lily had also come down from the mountain for revenge. The guy wanted to find her urgently. He recognized Lily's talent and strength, but he thought that she could probably use some help. He was afraid for Lily, that she might have an accident. Then how would he feel, realizing that he hadn't gone looking for her? Imagining the scary pictures of his girlfriend in his head, Lu Xun started to feel nervous. He accidentally shouted and ordered Mu Yunyang to go to Lily's house right away. It seemed as if the woman would go deaf from his shouting. Mu Yunyang remembered that Lily had mentioned that her hometown was in Yunnan County. There were quite a few Haikan monsters in that county, as far as Lu Xun knew, but the guy's imagination was already running wild because there was just a hairy demon. After 30 kilometers, the travelers arrived at Yunnan County, immediately attracted by the welcome sign, but it evoked a completely different emotion. The subordinate was happy to inform his head that good meat had arrived this time. Lu Xun burst in like his home from the doorstep, asking for food for him and his companion. The Lord ordered his subordinate to greet the new guests, which he was only too happy to do. As a consequence of hospitality, the waiter first served a pot of tea. Lu Xun wished to see the menu. The guy's steady gaze stopped on the employee, as if realizing the strangeness of the situation. That look made the employee break a sweat, but he didn't show it and repeated his question, what do the guests want, again? But Lu Xun didn't ask for the menu again, and somehow walked away from the matter, saying that it didn't matter what they wished for. This scene agitated Mu Yun Yang. She realized that something was wrong. That's why Lu Xun first warned the woman not to drink this tea, because this tea contains poison. This place was no ordinary canteen, but a black market. The woman could drink the most real poison, and then what would happen? Pouring out this tea, she realized that Lu Xun was indeed right. But how did Lu Xun know it was a black market? When he first walked in, he found the smell of the place to be very peculiar. But it was a real lie Lu Xun lied to Mu Yunyang to influence her psychosomatics, and yet, the woman believed him. Lu Xun knew the true reason, but he couldn't reveal it to anyone. And the truth was that this person's name was Red. This was the first time Lu Xun had seen a red name, but he knew what it meant. Only murderers have a red name. No matter how this man smiled, Lu Xun saw right through him. Suddenly, a plaque task appeared. Lu Xun needs to figure this place out completely, and then he will be rewarded with 50,000 experience points and 100 extra points. Lu Xun was overjoyed because this was the first time he had a side quest, and it had three parts. The first part of the assignment is to find the defenseless mother and daughter even gave a clue, but Lu Xun was very afraid that everything was too tied up. Mu Yun Yang assumed that the companion was looking for the source of that odor, but he was just being thoughtful. A plan was already maturing in the guy's mind. He wanted to find the kidnapped people. The woman still didn't understand if these people had really kidnapped someone, so she was surprised by Lu Xun's attitude. Maybe they are hiding people in that kitchen, already sharpening their knives, preparing to cut them into meat. 
but what was surprising was the nonchalance with which Lu Xun spoke about it, as if it were an everyday reality. The mere suggestion of such a thing made the girl stupefied. She was disgusted by the idea that people could do that to each other. These words really pissed off Mu Yun Yang. She could no longer sit idly by. The woman was ready to head to the kitchen. She was sure that no one would be able to stand up to her. Falling down on the table, Lu Xun tried to stop this mischievous empress. Lu Xun felt that they should stick to a strategy in such places. They couldn't rush out there right away, otherwise they would make things worse for themselves. But what to do in such a case? Lu Xun already knew and asked to trust him. To start, he called for the waiter to come over to him. He was ready to serve the customer with pleasure. But instead of ordering as he was supposed to, he heard something else. He heard a request addressed to the owner to release the captured mother and daughter. With absolute certainty, he continued to say, Maul let the master bind himself and walk over to this table. At this moment, Lu Xun must have felt like he was on the level of a deity. The waiter dared to assume that the dear guest must be joking, but in any case, the joke was not very funny. Mu Yun Yang was immediately up to defend her companion, but Lu Xun didn't let her say a word, ordering her to sit back down. Right in front of them was a crowd of men with bats and ready to deal with him. But Lu Xun didn't have an ounce of fear. On the contrary, he was looking forward to this battle. He hadn't fought in a long time and was excited to taste the battle again. The sitting woman was dumbfounded at the way this guy attacked the men. No one expected such a lunge from a self-proud young man. Mu Yun Yang recognized that the brother was much more ferocious than everyone here combined. The men begged for Lu Xun's mercy but it was unlikely that he would spare them. The battle was over, and the lad fairly rubbed his hands together, demanding an answer to his question. Where are the mother and daughter? The men had no choice but to respond. As it turned out, the mom and her daughter were in the back kitchen. The men literally groaned from the pain Lu Xun had caused them, but he had no choice, for otherwise they wouldn't have confessed. Only someone really didn't like the way this waiter was talking, for he had spoiled the host's whole plan and was punished for it with an arrow to the head. A recent man who was happy to receive our heroes clarified that these men were not well trained, so they were punished. Mu Yun Yang decided to ask for permission to enter this fight. She decided to trust Lu Xun and follow his plan, so she didn't do anything without his permission. But she shouldn't even bother, Lu Xun was sure that all these mercenaries would die. The master has sent his mercenaries to attack and destroy these rascals. Lu Xun seeing all the bouncers flying straight at him didn't even move. He should have uttered that, these people are all dead as a bright yellow color shone around him as well, destroying all the enemies. The master realized that things were bad because the cultivator in front of them. The mercenary blades were insignificant and couldn't do any damage to Lu Xun. No one had any idea what their enemy's abilities were, but it was time to show the cherry on the cake. Lu Xun took out the scabbard of the Qi blade. Yes, it wasn't a full-fledged weapon. But even an ordinary sheath created a huge and murderous energy that an ordinary person couldn't stand against, even if there were thousands of them. Lu Xun knew how to use it, and that made the sheath even stronger. Only the master didn't seem to be intimidated by this at all. He continued to threaten Lu Xun, saying that he would meet his end here. But it was the other way around. Rather, the master would meet his end here, if he doesn't answer where the mother and daughter are. However, in both versions, he's dead. But if he answers Lu Xun's question, it will leave his corpse intact. The master didn't feel fear for some reason, but it was obvious that the situation was stressing him out. He didn't know all of the boy's abilities and therefore didn't know how to act. The only way out of this situation is to escape, of course. If Lu Xun wants to know their whereabouts, let him try to talk to the fat man. The assassin wasn't going to just give up and aim the arrow straight at Lu Xun. But I'm sure he won't even hurt him with it. Not just one arrow flew, but as many as three. Lu Xun was confident in his abilities as usual and didn't even try to dodge the attack. It was just a challenge for him to take more serious action against the killer. So don't let the fat man complain later. The man started running so that he wouldn't meet his death right there. He probably didn't expect Lu Xun to be alive after his arrows. Lu Xun didn't even need to exert himself to catch up with this man. In one leap, he was immediately beside him. Hoping to scare the guy with his dagger, the assassin pointed it at Lu Xun. Although he realized that it was pointless because he was facing an unusual person. The fatty finally realized that the cultivator in front of him, but it was too late. There's no turning back now. Lu Xun summoned his strength to come out of his scabbard and serve him right now. Suddenly, the man began to repent that he had been wrong and asked for his life to be spared. He was forced to do so because the county officials had left him no choice. He waited for something to change, but nothing seemed to change. 
At that moment, the guy's eyes took on a serious look. His gaze was harder than steel. He decided to listen to this murderer's confession. Once upon a time, Yunnan County was always quite peaceful, filled with singing, dancing, and fun. All the people lived in prosperity. But three years ago, absolutely everything changed. The authorities became different and people were enslaved and forced to work hard. Farmland was destroyed, families could not gather around the same table, and children could not meet their own parents. For the sake of making things right, the people fell before the new ruler. Mu Yunyang confirmed his words. For these days, peace reigns, but not good officials are still overwhelmingly numerous, even amongst the demon clan. This only confirmed Lu Xun's speculation, which he didn't really expect. The political fortune was clear, but why would this man kidnap a mother and daughter? The man in tears asked to follow him, and on the way promised that he would tell about everything and the guys could see these girls. The mother was conscious, and was calming her little girl not to cry. The mother was sure that someone would help them. The man was pointing his finger at them unhappily, because these girls were not afraid of him at all, and he was showing that these people were used to humiliating others. As it turned out, they were from the family of the new ruler. The able task had been accomplished. Lu Xun received 50,000 points and 100 extra points, only wondered if this man had told the whole truth. The reward was followed by a second able task, get rid of the fog and find out the truth. The reward for this task is 60,000 points and 100 reputation points. After that, Lu Xun was sure that this man had lied to him. There was not a single bit of truth in his words, but no matter what, Lu Xun must see for himself. The assassin knew that once this guy went in, everything would come out right away. He must delay Lu Xun until the head arrived. Completely thoughtful, the assassin flinched when he heard Lu Xun's voice. He was not going to stand on the threshold and intended to enter with the man. The woman, thinking it was another murderer, started screaming, trying to protect herself and her child. She gave all her gold and silver to these murderers and did not understand what else they wanted. The murderer could only gag her with his words rebuking her for the fact that she and her husband already deserved the worst punishment and death. Very soon a man would come to punish this woman. She did stop talking, but she didn't calm down. Her gaze became even more piercing and attentive, trying to find at least some clue. The woman recognized Lu Xun's beauty, but she still thought that he was a despicable person, a waste of God's efforts on such a person. Lu Xun in turn thought that his charm would always come in handy. The assassin started to incite Lu Xun to leave, who knows what else she would come up with. But he didn't really want Lu Xun to hear any more information as well. But Lu Xun didn't even think of leaving, he offered the woman a small deal. He would ask a question, if she answered correctly, Lu Xun would help her. To her this was a small hope of salvation. Would Lu Xun really let her and the child go? Lu Xun promised this. What he was interested in was this. People said that there was an abundance of grain, but what kind of grain? The woman had no problem answering this question. The answer was, rice, millet, wheat, and beans. Is there anyone who does not know this? This was the correct answer to the question. The question was very simple, but it was unlikely that a woman of the highest circles or someone who was not interested in people's lives would know the answer. Thus, Lu Xun was convinced that the killer was lying to him. Lu Xun called out to Mu Yunyang standing beside him, who was happy to help him. The order was simple, Grab that fat man. After all, the girl had been captured deliberately. The fat man was already running away, but luckily for him, the person he was waiting for had already arrived. The man riding the horse had no idea who might have dared to attack him. It seemed that these assassins were known and avoided if he was so sure of himself. Seeing the huge crowd of bandits and the rider, Mu Yunyang hesitated whether to catch this scum. Should they either be destroyed or what? But right now, it didn't make any sense at all. Lu Xun is all about completing the mission, then what's the point of catching him? Lu Xun promised the woman that he would help her, but how can she believe him? Roughly speaking, she has no choice but to trust Lu Xun and Mu Yunyang. She knew it herself, so she decided to confess everything. This woman is indeed the wife of the Lord of Yunnan County, and this child is their daughter. A few days ago, the county was badly affected by the flooding. Her husband was busy with his duties, so the wife decided to help in some way. Along the way, she was attacked and robbed, all her servants were killed, but she survived with her child. Fatty realized that if this woman grabbed a sword, she would most likely take revenge. So the bandits decided to arrest her. The woman, of course, heard all this and realized that they were planning to capture her and then make an exchange with her husband. The woman knew Lily and knew her story, 
Lily's parents had been murdered, and then the house burned down. It was hard to forget. But she didn't think her husband could find her in exchange for her and her daughter. The woman wanted only revenge on those bandits. Even if she had to die, she would not regret what she had done. But as long as Lu Xun is here, no woman or child will die. That's a promise Mu Yun Yang began to realize that everything was connected to Lily. The woman also knew that all these bandits had unusual abilities. So she asked Lu Xun and Mu Yun Yang to leave and not worry about them. With tears in her eyes, she decided to ask for something. To be more precise, she asked him to pick up her daughter and deliver her to her father. This request allowed Lu Xun to complete the second task and receive the promised 60,000 points and 100 reputation. But Lu Xun kept insisting on his point after all, if he said that everything would be fine, then it would be. The third task appeared in front of him to bring mother and daughter home. The reward for the completed task is 70,000 experience points and 100 reputation and qualification points. Well, it's time to come back. Can Lu Xun get stronger if he gets the points? The woman began to guess that the cultivators in front of her were cultivators. Only from which clan she didn't know. Mu Yun Yang did not hide it and answered honestly that they were from the demon clan. The woman was stunned by this answer for some reason. Looking out of the door, Lu Xun could observe that these bandits were not badly prepared because they even had bows with arrows. Ryder was certain that even cultivators wouldn't be able to take this girl away from the bandits, so he proposed a common decision. The bandits caught her because of Lily's girlfriend. Lu Xun decided to assume that they might agree to trade for the treasure, so he proposed such a deal. However, the gang leader wasn't against such a deal either. What could Lu Xun offer them? He decided to give away his most precious possession, the scabbard of the blade key. Just like that, he decided to part with an item that he had gotten the hard way. The ringleader was not averse to looking at the thing, for from the outside it looked rather attractive. Only this fool was a bit overplaying his hand. He clearly had no intention of exchanging and intended to cut off Lu Sun Yu's hand, but he regretted it. The sword slipped out of his hand as if he had never wielded it. The horse sprang up so that the rider almost flew out. So why shouldn't this poor guy become one of Lu Shun's victims now? Such a killer would probably enjoy being influenced by Lu. The ringleader made a commotion and ordered everyone to attack Lu Shun. The bandits still holding the bow in their hands drew the bowstring tighter. They aimed many of their arrows at one Lu Shun. The guy was absolutely confident in every situation because he had a plan. He only has to say one word exit and anyone who wished death upon him gets the same. The sunny day was now adorned with many pools of blood around the unfortunate bandits. And Lu Shun remained untouched. These fools fancied themselves kings and paid for their pride, their brutal murders, stealing and harming their own. When Lu Xun was developing, these scum weren't even around. To him, they're like fleas in his path. Mu Junyang was with the woman the whole time, assuring her that everything would be fine. And when it was over, they finally came out to their savior. She spoke words of gratitude to Lu Xun in tears, for it was because of him that they were able to save their lives. Lu Xun planned to take the woman and child home under the pretext of safety. But in reality, we know what his plans are. After all, once he takes them home, the third mission will be complete. The woman was completely embarrassed because this demon clan cultivator was not only good looking, but his speech was also very sweet. It was a sin not to be admired. She couldn't refuse help because there was danger everywhere and Lu Xun deserved her trust. In a short while, they reached Yunnan County. When Lu Xun had to dwell in Yunnan County before, there was a ferocious and savage monster. The longer they walked, the day grew darker. It wasn't just the weather, but a strange aura. What could it be? Lu Xun could only hope that what he was thinking was just bad luck. But was this assumption true? Or was he just reassuring himself? Lu Xun was just calming himself down. He knew that this wasn't an omen but a true reality, and the dark-haired demon beside them was the same dark-haired demon. Unfortunately, he was not alone with his kin, who were eager to satiate the travelers. Things were bad because dark-haired demons at rank 2, it would easily definitely not be easy to fight them. But even now, Lu Xun had a plan. Mu Yunyang should take care of the woman and her child, and they could rely on him for the rest. And it was all for the experience points. I wonder if it wasn't for experience points. How would Lu Xun have acted in this situation then? Would he have been such a hero? First of all, he formed a protective barrier with his energy. That way it would be easier for him to fight, though it would take some extra power. These dark-haired demons have well-developed limbs and mediocre intelligence. Lu Xun was eager to know how many they had killed in their lifetime. But unfortunately, they weren't going to answer him. They were in a hurry to attack their next enemy. 
However, Lu Xun didn't mind having fun with them. They couldn't answer because they couldn't talk. These guys were transmitting a message to each other through telepathy. Therefore, they decided to catch the lower ranked ones. Lu Xun seemed to be beyond them because they didn't even have time to attack before they received damage from him. They didn't know. But the weakest person here was Lu Xun, except for the woman with the child. I don't know what they were thinking when they attacked Mu Yun Yang. If these guys decided to change their target, it didn't mean that Lu Xun wouldn't pursue them himself. Well, three dark-haired demons were killed, Lu Xun got 2,222 points, and Mu Yun Yang was checking to see if everyone was dead. Now the little girl need not be afraid of anything for her uncle has driven away all enemies. Close to midnight, the boys reached the Yunnan County Palace. From the palace, words of gratitude to the cultivators were heard. The entire family of gratitude fell to their knees, for thanks to Lu Xun, the woman and child had returned home. Suddenly, Lu Xun's gaze fell on the girl, and they met gazes. Lu Xun found this girl quite cute. The last method task had been completed. Lu Xun received his well-deserved reward, as previously mentioned. He was most interested in the qualification points, wondering if he would be able to move up thanks to them. To find out, he should ask the system to open the qualification points panel. He was excited to find out what he was going to get. It wasn't what he wanted, but as they say, the most important thing was not to win, but to participate. Lu Xun had no idea why he needed a first level marksmanship skill. But wait, Lu Xun seemed to know very well what he could do with this. No man would refuse something like this. Muyun Yang standing behind couldn't understand what was going on with Lu Xun. Only these musings were interrupted by the king. He didn't expect things to escalate to such a scale, and thought that the official was unworthy of being the head of Yunnan County. It's unknown what this king was up to, but Lu Xun stopped him by saying that it was fine. But the guys had to go so they decided to leave now. Lao Xun wanted to go to the Li mansion to wait for Lily to come. It didn't matter that it was night after all. Neither Lu Sun Yu nor Mu Yun Yang would be threatened by anything. On the contrary, they should still be feared. If Lily's address is correct, they should have come to her house. Taking a look at the house, Lu Xun confirmed this. After all, the mansion was completely destroyed. Just like that, following the map, Mu Jun Yang and Lu Xun reached Lily's past dwelling. Everything was a ruin and overgrown with cobwebs, making it clear that no one was here. This house was once filled with love, Lu Xun thought. And indeed, the parents loved their girl very much, gave her their attention, they taught her new things. They tried to raise a strong and independent girl, which they succeeded in doing. Where once there was life in this house, now there is nothing here but past pain. It was clear that Lily had been through a lot. It must have taken her a lot of courage and strength. It was as if Mu Yun Yang was living her life, and imagining what Lily had experienced, the woman was filled with rage and a desire to help take revenge on Lily's abusers. Only giving in to anger was very pointless. Lu Xun himself would have been happy to teach Lily's abusers a lesson. But some things only made sense if you did them yourself. But Lily's cultivation, whether she could handle it, that was what Mu Yun Yang was worried about. Lu Xun assumed that these people were quite vulnerable and believed that Lily could handle them. No matter how rude Mu Yun Yang seemed, she sympathized with Lily to the point of tears with all her heart. But one must believe in her. She is a brave girl and she will succeed. No need to worry, it's better to wait for her and then everything will become clear. The boys sat up all night waiting for Lily. Mu Yun Yang was beginning to think that she might have gotten lost, but it was unlikely. Would she rely on the hilt of a sword to show her the way? Lu Xun decided to go outside in case he caught her there. Even from far away the two saw each other. Lily immediately recognized her old friend from behind the wall. It was obvious that the battle had not been easy for her, as there were many scratches and bruises all over her body. But the main thing was that she was alive. Lu Xun had never been bored like this before. She became so mature that night. But did she cry? She was probably holding back her tears that night. Lily had definitely become an adult. The thought of his sister also flashed through Lu Xun's mind. Had Xiao Yu come to terms with the fact that he was gone? But back to the realities, Lily did carry out her revenge and got revenge on all those who had wronged her. Mu Yin Yang literally swooped down to hug Lily. They had become friends so much that they really had a warm relationship. At this moment, Lu Xun would also really want to hug Lily, but he had to restrain himself. Minors shouldn't be hugged. Lily was happy to be at her parents' grave and let them know that her revenge had succeeded. She would be even happier if she could hug them. The girl could only hope that they were doing well in that world and were even happier than they were here. Their daughter is fine. 
they don't have to worry. The parents have raised a truly worthy person. Lu Xun also showed respect to Lily's parents. Auntie and uncle shouldn't worry. Lily is very strong, and Lu Xun promised to help her. These words were very touching and caught Lily's eye, but it would be better if she didn't show her emotions so brightly. And it was really very nice of the boy. If she wanted to, Lily could rebuild this mansion, but she didn't want to, because there were too many memories associated with this place. She didn't want to dive into them again. Then there was nothing to linger here, and Lu Xun suggested to go further. The guys decided to head to Tong County and stop at a bar. Lu Xun saw a notification from the system that the beta version was open for 20 days. And after that, he got a map, as well as in-game, non-player features. The features included new quests, a marketplace with the ability to buy or sell goods, learning new skills, giving out rewards, an apprenticeship system, etc. Lu Xun didn't expect the Tianqin continent to be so big, there were a lot of newcomer villages here. There are about a thousand players in the closed beta, how many will fit in Tong County? Lu Xun's desire to catch some bad player was increasing by the minute. As soon as Lu Fu's desire to fix a relationship with someone was aroused, something incredible happened in Tong County. Just an hour ago, something really incredible was happening. The sky was in trouble, collapsing right on top of people, and they were running around like rabid chickens scared to death. People were enveloped by a strange haze that they could feel near them. There were indeed many newcomers and all of them were suffering incomprehensibly. Some were not afraid of the incident at all, for it did not affect them in any way. Some newcomers were impressed with the realism of this game because everything was like real life. New players were literally fooling around with each other and trying to figure out what worked here and how. So why don't they try to deal with another character? Li Wangji looked quite a strong man and was admired by the guys. But in Heavenly Dust, there were rules that said that one should choose normal names that would not offend anyone or anything in their translation. That's right. Upon arriving at the newcomer village, there are tasks to complete. And the first task was to follow the coordinates to get to the destination, Tong County. One of the newcomers offered the guy a partnership. Although the proposed guy was a member of the Knights Guild, the young man refused the offer because he liked to play alone and did not need allies. However, the guy wasn't too upset and wished him luck. The fact that there was even a spider web was very impressive. Such a realistic landscape. But something will surprise him even more. The young man in his carelessness stumbled upon a battle scene where assassins and a swordsman were fighting. Lyshan, an assassin, was paid 200 silver for the swordsman's head. The battle was really fierce. The young man was afraid. But at the same time, he wanted to watch it happen. But his curiosity was noticed by the swordsman, who clearly didn't want to miss the young man. In the same instant, with his strength and the swordsman pulled the young man to him, giving him no chance to escape. Yuntian decided to use this kid as cannon fodder and directed him towards the mercenary. Is this young man's life going to end right here? It would be completely undeserved. The sword could have slit his throat and he really would have died. But someone's beautiful shoes jumped on that sword to keep the bloodshed from happening. Lu Sun intervened in this battle very timely, intending to punish the bad players. In one fell swoop, he immediately threw the two players away from him. This particularly hurt the assassin. The young player buried his face in the ground. The swordsman stood as if he had no part in the battle, and the assassins were lying in the bushes. Whatever it was, the young man thought it was amazing and admired Lu Xun's strength. But Lu Xun himself somehow even felt sad, as there were only three players on the field. Despite the reason for their battle, the swordsman and the assassin ran away, so as not to make matters worse and become dead men. Mo Guanji wasn't even in a hurry to go anywhere, because he didn't have anywhere to go. Seeing this guy's nickname, Lu Xun wondered if it was a mismatch. This name Mo Guanji shook the world of the game twice, the first time he started worshipping and became a follower, and then he got infected and died. Maybe Lu Xun will meet someone great too. Both this guy's looks and temperament are very good. If Lu Xun takes a picture and posts it on the forum, he will get a lot of positive feedback. Of course, the charm of the 10th level made itself felt. Not only girls, but also boys fell for Lu Xun. Mo Guan noticed the purple-colored name. In the celestial dust, the color of the nickname represents the player's personality. From the lowest to the highest. First comes gray, yellow, blue, purple, and then orange. Being completely fascinated by Lu Xun, Mo Guan had no control over himself and looked at his savior with his mouth open. Lu felt like this guy wasn't very smart, and maybe he needed help. The system window was also purple, which Lu Xun had just noticed. He was asked to give a task to player Mo Guang Yu. Of course, he answered in the affirmative. Lu Xun decided to make himself a benefactor, 
and play the role of a noble and kind person, so he suggested that the young man work together. Moguan met a player with a purple nickname at the very beginning of the game, one could think that it couldn't be better. It was a stroke of luck for him. And of course, Mo immediately agreed, the shout of agreement was audible even to Lily, which she marveled at like some crazy guy. This young man has an amazing future. And Lily was jealous, literally begging to look at her instead of this guy. It wasn't easy to delegate a task, because for that, you have to set the necessary requirements for the task, and also give rewards from your pocket. Lu Sunyun himself needed experience points, so he decided to choose money. Mo Guan was getting very anxious because the purple nickname player's task was not going to be easy. Would he be able to accomplish it with his strength? Lu Xun decided to give a task, which was to find a friend and of course, you have to bring that friend. Mo Guan would receive 12 silver pieces for this, although the young man did not expect it. But I am sure there will be much more in the future. Of course, he accepted the assignment. In the early days of the game only a few players can get shot. It's worth Lu Sun getting into town. Everyone will immediately see that he has a purple nickname. The young man, delighted by this turn of events, promised that he would do the task perfectly. Therefore, without expecting anything more, he ran to accomplish the tasks. This motivation of Mo Guang caused Lu Xun to smile. Meanwhile, something was going on in Tong County. The people were furious at some meanness and were shouting right under the royal palace. It was scary to approach these people, they were very angry and disgruntled. But Mo Guan risked asking what was wrong. Turns out the soldiers wouldn't let people in, saying they were strangers of unknown origin. The soldiers warned us that they would not let us in without a pass. If it wasn't for the small level of people, they would have shown them where the crayfish were. Mo still continued to be amazed at the realism of this game. Suddenly, he had a plan and told the player that he knew someone who could help. His plan was to fool this player, and then find another player, and ask for help. The road was known to Mo Guang Yu, so he led the man along. As you guessed, this man Lu Xun is the one who can help them. Lu Xun rested, and was in his pensive state, and listened to what his ward was telling him. It wasn't even brooding here, but rather boredom. The situation was gaining momentum that Lu Xun didn't expect. All he was required to do was a pass for these people. You need an official seal to prove your identity. Mo Guan literally begged Lu Xun to help, and emphasized that this person was important to him, and that he was not some kind of crook, but a good citizen. Seeing the purple nickname on Lu Xiong, this citizen himself became fascinated. He felt as if he was asleep. Lily wouldn't trust these people, but Lu Xun convinced the girl that everything was fine, and there was nothing complicated here. Lu Xun really believed these people and asked them to rely on him. He'll go back to Yunnan County and get help. Get a pass? It's a piece of cake. These guys became even more fascinated after agreeing, paying special attention to his looks and beauty. The system immediately issued a side quest, the reward for which would be 10,000 experience points and 100 reputation. Lu Xun suggested that Lily rest in this place, and he himself would come over soon. She had no choice but to agree. She didn't know why they wouldn't take her with them, but she was happy to be treated with care. Lu Xun was confident that everything would go well. After all, luck was on his side. Familiar faces met in the palace. The head himself was glad to see his savior, and now to help him, for even since that evening he had been indebted. Lu Xun remembered the very girl he thought was very nice. If he was being helped, why not have a good relationship? Lu Xun suggested this. He saw Mr. Jiang's daughter as very capable, and she could be sent with Lu Xun to the demon clan to develop cultivation when she was a little older. What would the Lord himself have to say to this? The father was actually surprised that the daughter had talent. In the heavenly dust, there is still a belief that children are unable to cultivate have two reasons. The first is to let children spend a happy childhood in the company of their parents. The second is that the older one is. The easier it is to learn. Of course Lu Xun wouldn't lie and was telling the master everything blatantly honestly. Zhang was grateful for such a compliment, for this was something he didn't know, but her future depended on her father's decision. And his decision was positive, because it meant that the Zhang family would be able to enter the number of cultivators. So the Lord demanded that the servants prepare everything as soon as possible. Mom and daughter immediately showed up. Father asked that Yu Er show herself to that uncle. The first thing she uttered was that her uncle was very handsome. Yu Er worshipped him with all sincerity. But she did it very painfully and a bump grew on her forehead. But it flattered Lu Xun very much. He found it a nice gesture. Now it's time to check on Yu Er. Mu Yun Yang should be the one to do it. Lu Xun, who was so often adored, himself found an object of adoration in this girl, as if she was his sister or daughter. 
Did Yua really have the ability and talent to cultivate as Lu Xun believed? Such a little girl really did have abilities, Mu Yun Yang was proof of that. The woman saw as many as seven spiritual roots in Yu Er, which was a very decent amount. The father was very happy to have a future cultivator in their family. When the girl reached adulthood, her parents would be happy to send her to the demon clan to train. This was the kind of sudden arrival of Lu Xun that changed the girl's whole life, as if turning it upside down. Mu Yun Yang and Lu Xun are gone. Now the future is in the hands of the girl and her parents. Lu Xun carelessly handed over all the papers that were signed. Now Mo Guan could finish his started plan. The men were very grateful to their master for he had helped them a great deal. Well, sometimes helping others is really good and very rewarding. In addition to the papers, he also received 12 silver for his completed mission. Lu Xun will definitely still give other missions. Mo Guang's new acquaintance was called Zhou Hui. He was also trying to attract the cultivator's attention because he thought he was quite strong. Lu Xun should only look at him. Lu Xun decided to think about it after all. After all, this player would soon become a subordinate of a high-ranking person. Such connections are very useful and can be utilized. If he starts at level 1, he will put more effort into development in the future. Zhou Hui was furious because now his sympathy had decreased by one point. What had he done wrong towards Lu Xun? Was he too ugly? In any case, the goal now was to go to Tong County, and then already to Qingling City. Zhou was still reeling from the fact that he had lost one sympathy point, and Mo Guan was happy to receive the next task. The reward for this task is an eagle finger skill of grey rank. Zhou, although upset, accepted this assignment. There was no need to spend experience points to learn the eagle finger for Lu Xun and his team to learn it. Someone decided to screenshot Lu Sunya. What was the purpose of this screenshot? It's in the future to get his sympathy back. But Zhou was making great progress since he was able to meet such an outstanding person. Lu Xun was already getting into the prepared chariot. Only something caught the guys' attention. Not something, but someone. It's Lily who was waiting for Lu Xun and Mu Yun Yang. Literally from the first glance at this girl, guys lost their heads marveling at her beauty and charm. Only Lu Xun didn't like it at all. He only got angry as he tried to hide his girl from the eyes of outsiders. He was very unhappy that they were able to see Lily. Understanding Lu Xun's mood, they quickly sat down and harnessed the bridles, determined not to anger the Lord any further. Lu Xun sat down to hide Lily from the outside world with his entire body, as if it was his most precious treasure. He was also unhappy that the player had taken a screenshot. He suspected that this screenshot wanted to be published on the forum. Lu Xun asked that the girl should dress more revealingly in the future, and even wear a veil on her head. If she wasn't in love with him, she would probably be angry at such a request, but now she thought that he just didn't want others to look at her. Well, Lu Xunu now has nothing left but to memorize their nicknames and then kill them one by one. The guys decided to continue the conversation in whispers. Joe asked if cultivators couldn't move through the sky, so why use a horse? Mo Guan assumed that the master didn't want to stand out, after all, he had a purple rank. Besides, what use would they be then? Zhou was delighted with his new acquaintance, for he had managed to fulfill the purple player's task, and was also quite intelligent. Now this guy will surely take Mo Guan as an example. At that very minute, Zhou decided to send a message to the chairman, with the happy news that he had managed to meet a purple player and achieve the impossible in the beginning. Chairman Mei Qianhua was stunned by this news and didn't even know what to reply. However, he saw it as a new opportunity. Purple players were worth their weight in gold. Whoever managed to win their attention would become much stronger. The chairman immediately decided to send the news to the poor Knights Guild. It sounded like this. A closed beta test player accidentally met a purple player. The purpose of spreading this news was to first warm up the readers and then cast the rod. Well, such good news, the chairman hoped would continue to be the center of attention. The news immediately spread to all systems. Joe immediately realized that this news was published by the chairman. Lu Xun looked at the new users, and they were pretty good. The only thing that was a pity was that there was no reply function, in which case Lu Xun would have left a couple of comments. His wait was worth it. Everything went according to his plan. The news about him was posted and took the first line among the popular news. Players kept commenting on this news. Some couldn't believe that there was actually a purple player in the newcomer village, while others thought that this player just wanted to stand out. Lu Xun was only happy to see such comments. One must continue, and then he would be able to advance his reputation. There were over 3,000 replies on the poor Knights Guild under that post. I wonder what they posted again? A photo of him was published, which Zhou managed to take from the back. Lu Xun was satisfied. 
The angle was just right. This photo showed all his beauty. The players were awestruck by this beauty, however, as expected. It seemed as if they were willing to stare at this picture forever to memorize all of Lu Xun's features. One girl decided to make Lu Xun her husband, and immediately warned all commentators that this man belongs to her. But the commentators were already overreacting. The players were getting too carried away with Lu Xun, which was weighing on his psyche. Only all the actions were predictable. Predictability. When Lu Xun presses the panel, what will change? People will just go crazy. The results would probably not be good. Lu Xun decided it was better not to reveal anything. Suddenly, the poor Knight's Guild deleted his post very quickly. But the commenters still didn't calm down, and now wanted to name Lu Xun Yu. The commenters made a decision about Lu Xun's name very quickly. More than 60,000 likes were given to the suggestion of the Purple Lord, but for some reason, this name didn't sound very good to Lu Xun. One comment suggesting to look at how Lu Xun could love and then already decide what to call him. This made Lu Xun angry. He was ready to find this commenter and nail him. The girls were afraid to even utter a word to Lu Xun. But Lily still asked what was wrong, to which she received no answer. But in order not to arouse suspicion, Lu Xun knew that he remembered the neighbor's dog and could not contain his emotions. Success must be paid for and these comments weren't that important. At least Lu Xun hoped that people had already fallen for it. About 20 minutes into the drive, and the boys arrived in Tong County where people were still crowding in. Lu Xun ordered Mo Kuang to prepare and take care of the documents. When he headed towards the people, the crowd paid close attention to them. Thinking that people were greeting Zhou and Mo Guan, the guys got very embarrassed. But we know who they were paying attention to. The news spread too quickly. If Lu Xun was beautiful in photos, then he was even better in person. People should let everyone offline know about it. No one should miss it. The girls had stood at the gate for a long time, but now they realized that it had been worth it, for they had almost seen a deity. A crowd of fans had gathered outside the chariot. Lu Xun thought it would be a good idea for him to play along with them. So in the next instant, he created the most charming look and smiled the sweetest smile, asking not to create a crowd. Thinking that the Purple Lord cared for them, the people were fascinated by him even more and uttered words of devotion. If it were possible, the girls would even agree to live in his pocket, but it was time to hand out the passes. When they heard that the Purple Lord had decided to help them, they were moved to tears and were ready to kiss that paper. No one expected that they would be able to get in. Mo Guan had already handed out all the papers. Now it was time to return. The Purple Lord was leaving. This brought tears to the girls, for they had yet to see his appearance. To avoid anyone else throwing themselves under the wheels of the chariot, Joe quickly moved away from the crowd. On the way to Qingling City, Lu Xun could only hope that these people had finished their pursuit. After all, all along the way, they did not dare to leave him behind and followed him. Mu Yun Yang offered Lu Xun an alternative option to change his appearance. But he didn't seem to like the idea very much. But he didn't see the need in it because people like him feel the attention of other people. It would be especially good if it was the attention of the opposite sex. There was a notice for completing a new mission, help players solve problems. For completing this mission, the reward was as previously agreed. If Lu Xun gives out a task to players, he will get more experience points. The payout would be 2,000 experience points for every 24 hours. This is the right time to realize Lu Xun's plans. That means it's time to nurture the vegetables in the vegetable garden. If he splits those 2,000 points between several players, that would be a great fundraiser. In the night, the boys managed to reach their destination. Mu Jun Yang ordered her wards to park the carriage in a quiet nook, which they did. Stopping, they waited for further instructions from the cultivator. Mu Yun Yang sensed something and asked everyone to be quiet. Mu Yun Yang created a huge fog around the chariot. If a person is not inside, the chariot will not be seen. Master was meditating right now, so Mu Jun Yang had created all the necessary conditions for it. First, he sat comfortably with his eyes closed and focused on his breathing. This was his way of starting any cultivation with internal self-analysis. Curtains fluttered smoothly around the carriage, energy enveloping not only him, but the entire chariot. Lily felt the direction of his blades change, but it was hard to describe exactly Hey, Lu Xun once again continued to fight against his elder sister's shadow. It was possible that through many battles, he would be able to become her equal. Today was the last day to cultivate with the blade, so he needed to hurry. It had been quite some time, but he still hadn't come close to Gu Xiaoman's level. The first 29 days were quite hard, but now Lu Xun was used to these battles. Only that didn't mean it was easy for him. Once again, he was defeated. But most importantly, the task was completed and one experience point was gained. 
Lily sat beside Lu Xun, but she didn't think of distracting him. All the while she was listening intently to her senses, the way he was fighting, until suddenly she saw her blade start to tremble. As a consequence of the battle, Lu Xun also received a promotion to the second level of swordsman. Come to think of it, it wasn't that bad. The first attribute point was useful before. And now it's time to step up. The system congratulated Lu Xun for obtaining the blade intent and reaching the second level of swordsman. Lu Xun is happy that he got to create something of his own. Lily was very worried about her brother. If need be, she was willing to help. But he didn't complain about anything, as usual. Because in fact, there was nothing wrong with him. For some reason, Mu Yunyang's blade also began to react to Lu Xun's scabbard. But he hastened to reassure the girls that everything was fine and it was nothing. Although Lu Xun was happy to receive the blade intent, he realized that he shouldn't underestimate the consequences. As no matter what, the other players in the cities were also not behind in terms of strength. So it's worth getting into town as soon as possible. Chinling City is the closest city among several villages. It is under the protection of the Demon Clan, so no one dares to make trouble. There are no bans, and the city gates are always open. A girl in a red and white dress watched the carriage carefully from the height of the roof. From this distance, she smelled a mid-rank artifact, which seemed quite interesting. The task from the master was completed, and for this, Mo Guan received his Eagle Claw reward. Just about now, these guys were hoping they would be successful and could forget about the master. The chariot stopped near one inn where they were already met by a servant. They decided to stay at this inn for the night, maybe longer. Since the third heir was addicted to cooking and decided to stop his cultivation, he decided to take over the restaurant as well as the inn, and was happy to host cultivators. The next morning the boys gathered at different tables. Now that the task was completed, they could leave. Lu Xun was ready to start implementing the first point. Let the guys develop themselves. Let me remind you of one of the scumbag's recommendations. Do this when you run out of money. Joe already thought that the Purple Lord was chasing him away and didn't realize what he had done wrong. Mo Guan sat like a mouse, saying he didn't know anything and wouldn't say anything. Lu Xun kicked him out under the pretext that Joe's skill level was too low, so he didn't see much point in taking him further. Therefore, Lu Xun was sending him to continue cultivating and would call Joe when the time came. He hoped that Head Shen would be able to raise him to his feet, but for now, Lu Xun could only wait. So if he became strong enough, he would be able to follow a cultivator? Joe couldn't believe that he was too weak. It was like this. It really motivated Joe to keep practicing. He promised that he wouldn't let his master down. Joe realized that the Purple Lord had high hopes for him, which meant that one day he would be able to stand side by side with him. This user now had a purpose. Leaving in tears, Joe asked Mo Guang to watch over and help the cultivator while he practiced. But on the other hand, Joe understood and it could be seen, because the Purple Lord valued Mo Guan more. Guan said goodbye to his brother. Joe was sure that when he returned, he would become number one, and then the cultivator would definitely take him with him. But until then, we need to keep an eye on Mo Guan. Until now, Guan hadn't uttered a word about anything serious. Now he clarified, did he need to train more? He needs to train but not like Zhou. What Lu Xun was interested in was this. Did Mo Guan want to become his handyman? If Lu Xun didn't have a blade, then he decided to use this player. It was a great option. Under the handyman, Mo Guan immediately assumed that he would become the Purple Lord's disciple. Of course, in such a case, he considered himself lucky. There was no way he could refuse such a chance. Mo Guan had accidentally entered the closed beta testing and his bright future was already predetermined. It turned out as follows. If some gamers saw the Purple Prince, they would write to Guan Yu first, which meant that he would be able to solve his loneliness problem. The Demon Clan was one of the most important clans in Heaven's Dust, and the Purple Man was the one actively promoting it. There were rumors that the clan had quite a few things going on. The young man was eager to find out exactly what. Now the ward even knew what the Purple Lord's name was, he was sure that the girl's attention would now be on him. In two clicks, Mo Guan became Lu Xun's underling and a member of the Demon Clan. Lu Xun had assumed that the mentoring system would open at the 30th level. So why was there such an advance? It was probably because of his miraculous abilities. Lu Xun had planned to teach Mo Guang to teach him everything first, or else he might also sully his reputation. And he began by saying that such a title is very secret. It's not worth telling everyone about. Mo Guan understood this and promised that he wouldn't tell anyone. It was wonderful, because who wouldn't like that? Every novice user dreamed of being an apprentice to such a gentleman. 
Lucian suggested that the disciple familiarize himself with the surroundings and return here in 10 days. It was necessary to let Guang Yu go on a short journey so that it would bear fruit. If there are any problems, the student can come back here. But what it really meant was this. If you have any difficult assignment, come to me. Mo Guan was astonished, for his teacher was helping him like a father. The disciple already saw Lu Xun as his authoritative father. And Lu Xiong only wanted his disciple to avoid trouble and accomplish feats. To begin with, Lu Xun decided to give this boy a carrot, in the form of five sympathy to pull him closer to him. Lu Xun couldn't help but notice the fact that the disciple was truly obedient. To the girls he suggested they go shopping, but first it was best to change clothes so as not to catch the eye of other people. Of course, Lu Xun himself also decided to change clothes in his room as well. But no sooner had he put on his outfit than someone knocked. Lily, alerted, entered his room. She was already ready and waiting for Lu Xun. Only at the threshold did she ask for permission to enter. Lily didn't expect to see Lu Xun half-naked. As soon as she saw it, she was speechless and forgot why she came here. She had such an opportunity in front of her, and she forgot all the words. All Lu Xun was thinking about right now was for Lily not to shake them. This guy's nose was already bleeding at the sight of this girl's form. But Lily didn't seem to hear that. She was trying to remember why she had come here. Lu Xun still didn't take his eyes off her breasts, but he asked what was wrong. The intimacy between them was growing. Both of them were very embarrassed, but Lu Xun kept his cool. Realizing that he was staring too much at Lily's breasts, Lu Xun felt awkward and tried to look away. Lily still had the courage to tell him what she had come to tell him. Her wish was to become Lu Xun's ward. He was extremely surprised. Where had he ever seen a girl being a ward? She would be responsible for many things, including guarding Lu Xun. Breaking down into a scream, Lily begged to be accepted as a swordswoman. There was no way she would let others get closer to Lu Xun than herself. It didn't matter if it was a guy or a girl. Did this girl accurately understand everything? Lu Xun began to suspect that she didn't want to be his swordswoman, but rather, his approximation in bed. As a sign of her seriousness, Lily bowed and made a promise that she would fulfill all his wishes. Lucian thought so, and now he was not surprised, after all. This girl had fallen in love with him at first sight. It couldn't be otherwise. The only problem was that she was only 16 years old. He couldn't offer her a relationship or anything, much less be his ward. First of all, it wasn't necessary. Lily felt sad. She dared to assume she wasn't good enough or strong enough. Lucian hurriedly reassured her because he thought that she had made great achievements. Such as her bust, of course he didn't say so. Lily wanted to become stronger to protect Lu Xun, but he wouldn't even give her a chance. Lu Xun had always been pleased by this thought which he did not hide. But really, it's the man who should be the protector, not the girl. Chinling City is quite lively today, with birdsong and the sounds of eating and drinking all around. But in all this variety of sounds, Lily heard only her heart. It was a feeling that she couldn't rest. It was the feeling of being close to Lu Xun, the person she cared about. Well, Lily makes excellent use of her head, thrusting her breasts forward to strike down men, but Lu Xun thought it was better to distract her. Lu Xun wanted to see how much her combat skills had improved. The whole atmosphere was ruined. Shouldn't something different have happened now? But now what was supposed to happen is about to happen. Lu Xun leaps at Lily! The girl gets a fist on her forehead, then Lu Xun hurts her. But luckily, she reacts quickly and fights back against her opponent, giving no more chances to catch herself off guard. Now she's in the fight too. The battle went on for half an hour, only, unfortunately, Lily's opponent was stronger. He threw her to the floor and pinned her arms, proving that she couldn't be his protector. Was that man still checking something out? Lily couldn't even understand what they were doing here. The scenario was not going according to plan again. How would Lily defend Lu Xun now? To him, even such a suggestion was ridiculous. The girl's eyes literally lit up to work harder and thus become stronger. She will definitely succeed in the future. Just from the mere sight of Lily, Lu Xun felt a strange chill down his back, making him feel scared. Lily thanked her brother for the training and said that she understood everything. Only Lu Xun didn't believe it. After a bit of practice, the boys finally went outside, where a full complement of turtles were walking around like stray dogs. Mu Yun Yang had no idea what these turtles were doing here or why there were so many of them. And the most interesting thing is that they were mostly walking around Lu Xun and bowing their heads to him. Lu Xun was interested in the behavior of turtles after all. Where was it seen that turtles bowed their heads to someone? Mu Yun Yang assumed that they were paying homage to him. Turtles Lu Xun Yu. The turtle is one of the sacred animals. 
along with the dragon, phoenix, and Keelan. They represent good luck. Turtles showing up here is a very good sign. There were a lot of turtles, but people didn't consider it a problem. They treated them quite calmly, as they seemed to be really sacred animals here. At this moment, Lu Xun decided to take out his scabbard, which flashed a blue color at his call. Qinling City was built on a giant tortoise shell protecting the city. Therefore, it is not surprising that the local people consider turtles as sacred animals and honor them. This was just a small fact, said by Lu Xun, but it also caused admiration in Lily. She thought he was very intelligent. Lu Xun actually learned this fact from his previous life when he played this game. While the guys were having conversations, they were being followed. Of course, the followers of the Demon Clan noticed it. In order not to give away the fact that they had actually spotted a spy, Mu Yun Yang tried to speak in a whisper. The decision was made not to give the view and move on. Lily decided to try to be scared to get close to Lu Xun, like she's afraid of bandits. But Lu Xun looked at her game skeptically. Qinglin City was a place under the protection of the Demon Clan. The vast majority of people wouldn't dare to raise a ruckus. Who could be so bold? Well, and they'll know it when they see it. They took a break last night, and today they're being followed. It's bad luck. How should they proceed then? First of all, it is important to remember that everything depends on location. It was so dark in that alley, it looked like a place that was very suitable for committing atrocities. Lu Xun's acting was a bit lacking. He should work on his skills. Could it be that if they went adrift, they could attract a stalker? This was of course the best option. And since they were all here and together, Lu Xun thought, why don't they get to know each other? His chatter was interrupted by a dark shadow. And in those milliseconds, Mu Jun Yang only had time to cry out in warning to her brother. A woman's red manicured hand reached for Lu Xun's scabbard, wanting to take possession of it. Surely this woman wasn't prepared for the fact that the guys already knew of her arrival. Lu Xun immediately summoned his blade Qi. It was already very difficult for a woman to stand up to one Lu Xun, and then there was Lily and Mu Yun Yang. However, she did not hide her admiration for Lu Xun's strength. Surely it must be worthy to have a mid-grade weapon. Who would have thought they'd be hunted by a witch? but more specifically, by a gun. Lu Xun had noticed her good figure from afar, but up close, this woman was even better. However, the woman also appreciated the weapon wielder's appearance. Lu Xun was truly handsome. Lily was literally seething with anger. How could that bitch look at Lu Xun like that? This was the truest flattery from the witch, but Lu Xun still thanked for this nice compliment. The witch needed some advice from the Lord. Only the Purple Lord felt that the woman did not deserve it, for she was thinking of bad things. Such an answer made the witch very angry. She thought this guy didn't understand anything at all. Only Lu Xun was certain that this woman could not fathom such knowledge. The mere sight of Lu Xun could stupefy any woman. But when he speaks sweet speeches, it generally confuses any man. How dare this witch even dare to compare some blade to Lu Xun's 10 levels of charms? Shame on her. This woman better wipe her drool. She didn't expect the gentleman to be so handsome. It really touched her heart. But compliments don't fool Lu Xun. He remembered that this woman was first and foremost a thief, and that she had no place here, so let her get out of here. But this witch didn't even think of leaving. All she wanted was a decent weapon, and she thought it was better for Lu Xun to give it to Lu Xun willingly. As the saying goes, dreaming is not harmful. But Lu Xun realized that there was still something wrong with this woman. He'll probably have to fight, since the woman herself insists on it. It was only at this argument that Lily stood up. She wanted to fight too, for this girl had dared to trespass on the sacred. Aren't they afraid of death too? And the matter was bad. Mu Yun Yang saw that this witch possessed the cultivation of the three realms. The third realm means that the user's level is roughly at the 31st between the 40th realm. And Lu Xun is only at level 1. There are only 60 levels in Heaven's Dust. The realms are divided into realms. Beginner, Intermediate, and Exalted. The first realm is the 11th and 20th levels. The third realm is the 31st and 40th level. The fifth realm is the 51st and 60th level. Those who have reached the fifth realm are considered strong, and those who have reached the eighth realm are already called powerful. But such people are quite rare. To better assess the enemy- <laughs> An applied system detection? <laughs> this woman didn't even have a name visible. To understand whether to fight further or not, Lu Xun turned to Mu Jun Yang first. But the latter was not very confident in her abilities, because she is only at the second realm of cultivation. In short, the woman is not at all confident that she can stand up to the witch, which was very sad, but honest. Now Lu Xun would have to spend his experience points that he had saved up with hard work. But even if he spent all his experience points now, it was still not sure that it would be enough. 
Oh, as they say, only with money can one feel safe. Speaking of which, this is the demon clan's territory. How dare she rebel in the first place? What, the witch still wants to fight? Had Lu Xun only now realized the horror of it all? But a woman should look around first to see where she is. Lu Xun decided to use teleportation, which Mu Yun Yang quite approved of. Lu Xun had the demon clan's teleportation talisman, which definitely played into their hands. I wonder how many demon clan disciples this witch would be able to resist. The witch really didn't expect to run into people from the demon clan. This was a very unexpected turn for her. She even started to think that Lu Xun was threatening her. In Lu Xun's case, it was very important to have a couple of aces up one's sleeve, besides looks, of course. He didn't have great strength, but he knew how to use his advantages in time, and never showed his insecurity to the enemy. This witch can kill a lot of people before backup arrives, but this weapon is clearly not worth ruining relations with the demon clan. Her aide and herself had suggested to her that it was best for Madame not to provoke relations with the demon clan. Such matters were better thought out carefully. These scum don't need to think they're the strongest. The talisman is specially made for the demon clan, people will come in a flash. But Lu Xun shouldn't be too proud either, after all. That's what he was doing, bringing delicious dishes. Lu Xun only hoped that this witch would leave as soon as possible. He really didn't want to slap his face in front of his disciples. He had a rather majestic face, so he could bet that it wasn't that bad. Today, they are really lucky. Their lives are spared, but these guys don't say goodbye to them. Lu Xun was literally swept away at this moment. He was happy that they had left. But Lu Xun wasn't the only one who passed. Lily and Mu Yun Yang were also happy that everything was fine. But of course, they also thanked the Lord for it. This woman was quite mysterious. Lu Xun felt that something was about to happen very soon. But the system didn't give out any assignments. Here comes the system. It rewarded Lu Xun with the fact that he had successfully risked his life to prevent the robbery. His reward was a clue and 10,000 points. The clue was that this man belonged to another race. My mind immediately swam with speculation. When he played Heaven's Dust of his previous life, the other race was legendary as players often fought it. So this witch is from another race. But something didn't add up because she wasn't there yet. Lu Xun was completely frozen and Lily tried to reach him for he was completely silent. As usual, he didn't say anything about what he was thinking. But in fact, it was very complicated and it was a situation he would have to think about. Mu Yun Yang guessed that this woman must be many years old. The origin of this witch remains a mystery, but it's best to stay out of it. The guy knew that girls like to go shopping, and for girls like Lily and Mu Jun Yang, there was never time for that. So he suggested to continue on his way and not let any individuals spoil the mood. Our hero dared to assume that they had certainly not stumbled upon these specimens by chance. The girls were thrilled that their brother understood them so well. Along the way, he met a man named Xiao Zhan, to which he paid attention. Lily, of course, noticed how intently Lu Xun was watching that girl and didn't hesitate to ask, what was the big deal about that girl? Lu Xun replied in all honesty that this girl was pretty and deserved to be by the protagonist's side. And her face was more gentle than he thought. Lu Xun was praising another girl right in front of Lily. It seemed as if she was about to burst into tears. The atmosphere was getting very heated, but Mu Jun Yang was doing well. She was an avid watermelon lover and had no problem finding them. Lu Xun would be very unfortunate to lose this girl, so he immediately chased after her. But he lost sight of her and began to search for her with his eyes. Xiao Chan is from the Luo Tianzong clan, one of the four most important clans. Due to her appearance, there is a keen sense that she needs to be protected from something. But if the user falls for this nonsense, he will be a complete fool. Born with an angelic face, she was actually a demon, raised under the strictures of the Luo Tianzong clan. She often utters words of regret, but continues to commit cruel acts. She was the first player in Heaven Dust's history to display piercing cruelty and inhumanity. Most surprisingly, it was a girl named Yang Bao who made this wilted flower bloom. Lucian watching this was furious, but such actions had led many players down the path of no return. But now, the original course of Celestial Dust history may yet change. Just why would this woman come to Qingling? Come to think of it, there's a cultivation space in Qinling. That must be why she came. Lu Xun was literally thinking out loud, and when asked again what happened, Lu replied nothing as usual. He just saw something dirty. Lily already associated the word mud with demons, so she assumed that Lu Xun had seen them. Only it was scarier than a demon. That girl would not be easy to deal with. Lu Xun asked Lily to stay away from her. She looked rather weak in appearance, so Lily could assume she was much stronger. 
Lucian had forgotten how weird Lily can be. Who isn't weird when they're in love? But no matter what, she must remember Lucian's words and be extremely careful. In that same instant, she turned into the most obedient girl and agreed with him. Muyun Yang appreciated Lucian's attentiveness. It was surprising that he realized that the girl was not as weak as she wanted to appear. Even three or four people like Muyun Yang wouldn't be able to stand up to her. There was no point in crowding in one place, so they went for a walk. On their way, they met another person who again caught Lily and Lushun's attention. He seems to be familiar with this man, or at least met him before. That girl Yang Bao, as they say, you can't escape fate. What a scary world this is after all. Yang Bao praised the heavenly dust with all her heart and how conscientiously it was made. It had been a long time since she had visited this city in particular. Face, body, Yang Bao has all the factors to be considered a true jewel. Muyin Yang, who was following behind, asked what the gentleman was looking at. Lu Xun pointed at that girl. The guy didn't even realize that Yang Bao was also participating in the closed beta testing. So this is where it all starts? In that case, why doesn't Lu Xun do his test here as well? Well, it doesn't really matter anymore. After all, attacking this girl is tantamount to fighting the protagonist of this world. Lu Xun decided to pretend to pass by, but Yang Bao still paid attention to him. A man like Lu Xun can't be overlooked. Broad shoulders, beautiful waist, well-built and strong. Yes, he is perfect. His whole body radiated beauty. Is there anything more beautiful? Looking more closely at his face, the girl realized that she had met the Purple Lord. Oh, let that girl breathe. She couldn't believe her eyes that she'd met the Purple Lord. Lu Xun continued to ignore her, and Yang Bao couldn't get enough of looking at him. For the sake of this player, she was even willing to die. Repeatedly, people had noticed that the Purple Lord was much more beautiful in person than in a picture. Yang Bao felt like she was in a dream. To realize whether she was in reality or in a dream, out of habit, Yang Bao pinched her cheek and it turned out that it was not a dream. Lu Xun was in no hurry and still continued to pose in front of this girl like this. She finally made up her mind and approached the object of her fascination. Yes, that little girl fell for the trick. Lu Xun has accomplished the first part of the plan. When Lu Xun turned around to Yang Bao, the girl was very embarrassed and didn't know where to start or what to say. She never thought she wouldn't be able to say two words. She was sure she would die. The Purple Lord even had an appealing voice. Yang Bao had finally figured herself out. She didn't like girls, and in general, she didn't like beautiful people. Pulling herself together and stopping her hysterics, Yang Bao offered her candidacy as a disciple. That sounded actually pretty good. A very good suggestion. If Yang Bao can become the Purple Lord's disciple, she will die of happiness. Yang Bao had already taken Lu Xun's answer as a positive one. But it wasn't that simple. Lu Xun pointed forward, saying her best opportunity can only be found there. From the back, this girl seemed already a beauty, which Yang Bao couldn't help but notice. As soon as she wanted to turn to Lu Xun, she noticed that his trace was gone. Came and went without a trace. What a violet lord of mystery. The purple lord said that Yang Bao had a good chance of getting that beauty. Did they really create some kind of lucky people's guide? This was most likely the case. Yang Bao couldn't even imagine being able to get such a valuable clue from the Purple Lord. The girl did not miss this opportunity, and immediately caught up with Xiao Zhan, who had a blue nickname. Yang couldn't even get enough of this girl. She was so aesthetically pleasing, that Yang Bao fell in love with her at first sight. Just like the Purple Lord. That blink, her thinness and gaze conquered Yang Bao's heart. She circled around this girl, but they still hadn't spoken to each other. They added so many beautiful men and women to the game too soon. So Yang Bao is by, now it's finally clear. Yang spun around beside Xiao Zhan so much that she thought as if the girl was sick, which she said so out loud. Xiao Zhan had such a pleasant voice that the unfortunate maiden finally fell in love. Since Yang Bao was fine, Xiao Zhan asked to stay away from her. In order not to miss this girl, Yang Bao sprang into action and inquired if she needed a partner. Her gaze was harder than steel. It was clear that this girl was in trouble. Xiao Zhan is used to being alone and doing everything by herself. What kind of partner does she need with that kind of strength? Only Yang Bao was not the slightest bit upset. She was happy to receive from such a beautiful sister. She eventually flew to the former place where she parted ways with Lu Xun. Well, Lu Xun had already planted the first seed, so all we had to do was wait. What a hero we have. Lu Xun's gaze was too sly. Lily was worried. Was her brother thinking of something bad? But could the most beautiful person in this entire story really look like a bad person? Lu Xun was just thinking about the delights of life. Mu Yun Yang and Lily could not understand the adult world as Lu Xun understood it. Judging from the forum, the reaction to Lu Xun's appearance in front of Yang Bao today wasn't that great. On the forum, Yang Bao was happy to inform everyone that she had managed to meet the Purple Lord. 
On this beautiful sunny day, the girl felt the beauty of the realism of the celestial dust, and especially the moment he appeared in front of her. Lucian was pleased, for his appearance was praised to the hilt. Girls were willing to pay any money for a screenshot of the Purple Lord. By the way, Yang Bao is also the president of the Union, but rumor has it that not everyone is happy with her. But for one picture, she can try her best. Would Yang Bao like to buy just a piece of Xiao Zhan's broken heart? Will John guess which side Yang's heart is on? Not the left side, it's right into Xiao Zhan's. Well, it was pretty good, in short, just the way Lu Sun wanted it. Mo Guan, Lu Xun's disciple, had already managed to upgrade his level 1. For this, Lu had received a mentor point of 20, and it had only been one day. Mo Guan deserved to be considered a fateful emperor. Efficiency was something to behold. One thing I wondered was whether he would instigate some kind of conspiracy. Well, we should heat things up for Lu Xun. He had been cultivating for two whole days, completely abstracted from the outside world. Just on the second day, he had visitors. It was Mo Guan who had returned from his journey. He didn't look so good, of course. All tattered, scratched, and bloody. Five meters away from this guy, he smelled like chicken. Isn't that what you get when you're resurrected? What did Mo Guan go through? The apprentice was completely tired and scared. He was in a hurry to share the news with his mentor. One day ago, he met a man running who was shouting that everywhere was evil. Mo Guan decided to inquire about what was wrong with this user. On a mountain outside Qinling City, a man saw people jumping up and down as if they were possessed by evil spirits. He also saw a creature run up and bite them, which was a very frightening sight. Were they really zombies? But the man was so lost that he didn't perceive any words. And Mo Guan had a new assignment, corpse gas. He was happy that the system had allocated the assignment to him. After this story, he felt encouraged and promised to rescue the man and deal with what was going on there. Upon arriving outside the mountain of Qingling City, one could see what the frightened man described. Flesh tore under their sharp fangs and blood splattered around, creating a macabrean spectacle. The zombies dug into the heart with mad passion, devouring the flesh of their victim. Their strength increased with each bite, their skin filled with an animal desire to devour and destroy. It was about time Mo Guan could make his first kill in the heavenly dust. He already had the iron sword he bought for 12 silver pieces for this purpose. He felt excitement, but it didn't restrain his movements. On the run, he went towards the zombies wanting to kill them. Guan was 100% confident that he would be able to deal with these three scum, so he didn't doubt anything. But as soon as he approached them, they fought him back. The young man did not think through his actions and underestimated the enemy, so he was defeated in the battle. The zombies were too fierce. All this happened because of the incompetence of the student, but fortunately, he managed to save himself. But the monsters could not be killed. The blood was quite bad, and Mo Guan didn't feel very good. He fought vigorously, hoping that he wouldn't have to ask the Purple Lord for help. The master didn't blame him for anything. After all, he knew very well that his disciple's cultivation level wasn't high enough. Of course, it wasn't his fault. Guan was very grateful to the Lord for his support. Purple Lord was a very good man. Mo Guan considered himself lucky to be around him. He wanted to be like Lu Xun one day. Anyway, being on top is awesome. The Purple Lord is very powerful. Lu Xun had already guessed that Mo Guan had gotten a hidden mission about zombies. Would Lu Xun be able to obtain something like this? Here comes the catch. The corpse gas mission went to Lu Xun. The Purple Lord has been very lucky. Since that was the case, why not offer to help the disciple? Guan Yu doesn't even have to worry about anything, as everything will go smoothly. Only Guan remembered about his sister Lily and started to ask the Lord to send her with him. He really wanted her to help him kill the monsters. Mo Guan thought that the Purple Lord wouldn't want to be personally involved in everything, but the sisters would come in handy. Especially the sister who could fight so coolly was a guy's dream. Only it was much more complicated than the student could have imagined. Therefore, Lucian decided to leave on his own without any reservations. Could he waste experience points? Did the disciple think that Lu Xun didn't understand why he had asked to bring his sister specifically? Lu Xun himself was fascinated by Lily as soon as he saw her. The first time he met her, he drooled at the sight of her. Wasn't it too low of him to introduce a player as his wife? In any case, Lu Xun won't give such an opportunity to anyone. Furthermore, the Lord had another Chui blade in reserve, which would definitely help him at the critical moment. Mu Yun Yang and Lily must not be harmed. That was the real reason. Mo Guan didn't expect the Purple Lord himself to help him at all, of course. He was overjoyed at this turn of events. Lu Xun was going to do everything by himself to gain more experience points. 
the apprentice was completely discouraged that right now he would be going on a quest with the Purple Lord himself. It was as if a record had jammed and he had forgotten all the words. There was no limit to his happiness. He had never dreamed that he would be able to perform tasks with him. But first he must show the Lord the way. Without getting lost, they arrived at the scene of the recent accident without any problems. To unlock the hidden mission, you must first accumulate luck. Lu Xun had the ability, but not always the luck. The reminder of Qinling City, the corpse gas, the zombies. The covert mission that later became sensationalized shocked him. Two guilds were joining together at once to try and accomplish a hidden mission. Even back then in the past he wished he could have joined. And if he could, he would have paid his sister's expenses for at least half a month. It happened shortly after the open beta testing of Celestial Dust. At that time, that player's level was too low, so he couldn't complete the task by himself. Judging from the timeline, the main boss and hadn't shown up yet, so Lu Xun had a chance of success. After all, it was time for him to hit rock bottom. Once they reached the place, the master ordered the apprentice to show his full strength. Lu Xun's bait had been sent. The only thing left to do was to wait for someone to take the bait. This time, Mo Guan promised himself that he wouldn't let Master down. The apprentice prepared to fend off any attacks. He should be able to handle it, and he was sure of it. The first zombie was already flying at him in its huge jump. Mo Guan was ready. The zombie, distorted by hunger and bloodlust, approached Guan Yu. Its eyes are empty and lifeless, and its skin is pale and withered. When he is close enough, the zombie abruptly extends its claws on its fingers, which resemble sharp blades. The student's eyes were not filled with fear, only determination to prove to the teacher what he was capable of. But during this time he did not become stronger, and the zombies still overpowered him. And this time he found himself at the mercy of the enemy. Even with a sword, Moguan couldn't face such an opponent. At this moment, he might be killed. But even now he was thinking about the fact that it was likely that the Violet Lord was probably disappointed in him. But really, the Lord would first want to see how much blood the creature could consume before his student died. No matter how insignificant the mosquito was, it was still harmful. Mo Guan wasn't interested in his disciple at all, and he was more interested in the zombie. The Purple Lord was still here. Mo Guan couldn't afford to lose face in front of him. No way. There was definitely progress. He'd already managed to break free, but the zombie wasn't lagging behind either. You could see the blood on his fingernails. He was getting stronger because of it. Suddenly, he realized that it was his blood. Moguan was so engrossed in the battle and the desire to appear in a favorable light in front of his master that he didn't even notice the zombie had injured him. Mo Guan only wounded the zombie by 5% using his blade, and the zombie took 20% of Guan's life with his hands alone. What a despicable thing to do. The game was really made to perfection. The feeling in the game was also quite realistic, as Guan could feel his chest baking. This zombie was not going to stop and attacked again and again. He was not interested in the pity of his opponent. Mo Guang's life was at stake, all pride and heroism was gone, and the disciple asked the Purple Lord for help. When it comes to the life of the rest is not so important. After asking for help, Mo Guan returned to the battle and tried to predict the actions. There was nothing he could do but smile awkwardly but politely. Maybe the zombie would have a little pity. But the zombie was ruthless. He was only interested in flesh. Lu Xun felt Spanish shame. He had to observe this guy's stupidity. Looks like luck is far from favoring him. We should have entered the battle, but before we did, it was worth going to the system for information. Basic information about the zombies. The half-dead was level 3. It turned out to be a dead guy who got hit by someone else's energy, and now all they do is attack everyone. That's all? Well, for the sake of a level 3 half-corpse, Lu Xun will do his best. Whether it was pity or a desire to get the points sooner, but thanks to Lu Xun, Mo Guan was saved. In his disciples' eyes, the Purple Lord became even more cool and authoritative. But the zombies weren't about to abandon their comrade-in-arms either. More of them showed up. Their vicious and hungry faces were eager to eat Mo Guang's young body, who wouldn't know where to go if it wasn't for the Lord. If he dies in front of the Purple Lord and then uses the Resurrection Coin, there are risks that the Lord will kill him again. Had all his efforts been in vain, would he be subjected to death again? The Apprentice didn't expect it. But the Purple Lord stepped in, preventing the zombies from harming people again. The Purple Lord didn't abandon his disciple, as Mo Guan had already thought to himself. He was happy that his teacher had stood up for him after all. Only there's a small catch. The Purple Lord didn't do all this for nothing. The Purple Lord was too good at this moment. Mo Guan felt it necessary to capture this moment. Let everyone admire this handsome man. The recording was on, 
Mo Guan was filming the Lord. This would be his forum debut. Everything was going as Lu Xun Yu wanted it to. Heavenly Dust Forum become famous thanks to Lu Xun. From all sides, zombies were flying at the users, hoping to eat their future prey. Lu Xun maintained his equanimity, and equanimity just like in any other battle. The master decided to direct his stream of aura at the zombie. It was harder for them to run, but they didn't stop running and were still alive. But worry not, Lu Xun right now could use his trump card up his sleeve. The blade key sheath. This blade sheath will sweep them all away at once and there's nothing to worry about. That's it. All the zombies were destroyed in one move by the Lord. The purple Lord was very cool, and pretty soon everyone else would know about it. The wind itself was helping Lu Xun help Lu Xun, something the Lord didn't hide. Ah, how this caused even more admiration in the disciple. The wind belongs to the sky, but Lu Xun managed to repair it to himself. But unfortunately, Lu Xun's name never became popular on the forum. And that's a pretty big problem on the Celestial Dust forum. The Purple Lord was very quick to save his disciple. If Mo Guan uploaded this passage to the forum, it would definitely spread quickly. It might even become more popular than the last post of the Knights Guild. For completing the task and killing six half-corps, Lu Xun received a total of 900 experience points. But these points would be completely insufficient for advancement. If there are half-dead bodies, there must be regular zombies. We should look for them. Maybe they're somewhere in the depths. Mo Guan wasn't left unrewarded either and received 300 experience points for completing the corpse gas task. This young man never thought that he would ever meet one of Heaven Dust's key characters. The Purple Lord was simply amazing. Mo Guang lacked the words to describe all his admiration for this person. The Violet Lord's decision was to continue on his way. He needed more points, and he didn't want to leave almost empty-handed. The Apprentice was only too happy to spend as much time as possible with his mentor, so was very excited to head further afield. If one followed the Master, it turns out that Mo Guan could gain even more experience points. Few players had such an opportunity. It was only fair that Guan considered himself the Chosen One. Luck has often been on Lu Xun's side, so he can't let either himself or Mo Guang Yu die. Everyone finds something different on this hike, and the important thing is that everyone is happy. Walking from that clearing for another 10 kilometers, the guys came across a place with a fork. Where they would go next would only be decided by the mentor, and Mo Guan relied on him for that. But no way, this time Mo Guan will be the one to choose the path. Mo Guan's luck would be wasted if it wasn't used correctly. That's why the teacher gave this choice to the student. But before they could pick their way out, everyone took notice of the way the rope moved. The sheaths decided to point the way themselves, and they wanted to go to the right. To make sure to choose accurately Lu Xun and decided to check again. As it turned out, they didn't really want to go left. The young man felt completely lost he didn't expect the rope to move again. At this moment, the Purple Lord was so amazing, Guan wished he had not filmed this moment. Blade has taken the initiative for the first time. It looks like he's really attracted to something on the right. Interesting. If the Blade wants to go to the right, they'll go that way. If Mo Guan turned on the recording for 24 hours, wouldn't he look like a pervert? On the other hand, he really didn't want to miss any of the Purple Lord's actions. We should forget about this idea altogether. Mo Guan has too much guts. After a while, still walking along the right path, they came upon a thick fog. The fog was very thick and dense. Would they continue onward? The fog was similar to the fog Lu Xun had seen on the Tibetan mountain, but it was denser. Well, there was something in this place, and they must have traveled for a reason. The very rope on the scabbard said as much, for them to continue on their way more quickly. The sheaths were so eager to continue on their way that one would think it was as if there really was something attractive there. That's what they said. Let's go faster. I can't wait any longer. The Purple Lord's equipment was more like an artificial intelligence. I wonder if Mo Guan would be able to acquire one. Who would have thought that the Lord had such things? Of course, the blade wouldn't harm him either, but the thick fog made Lu Xun very uneasy. What was it hiding in the fog? Mo Guan himself began to worry about it and asked to go forward himself so that nothing would harm the Lord. But a disciple is supposed to walk behind him. The disciple was completely inexperienced, and Lu Xun was in a sense responsible for him. The master's ward wasn't exactly worried about him. No one knew what was lurking in that fog. But in any case, if he didn't go forward, he would gain less experience. But the Violet Lord still stood his ground. The disciple should go to the back. Or better yet, let him stay here at all. Mo Guan didn't even have time to say anything, as the Lord was already in the misty thick where he couldn't be seen. And afterward, an information sign appeared with a task to stay. If Mo Guan but obeyed, he risked being removed. The apprentice wouldn't mind violating the Purple Lord's order, but then his account would be deleted. 
The fog was though not as dense as on the Tibetan mountain, but visibility was still poor, and the temperature is much lower than outside. The smell is the same as when the boss appeared. The master may have to face a much stronger opponent here than he's faced before. Maybe the system could provide some useful information. In any case, after this, Lu Sun Yu would be much more relaxed to continue on his way. But the level was too low and the check was unavailable. The rope of the sheath was about to point the way to its master, which was unexpected. Did that mean it was talking to him? The blade is related to Lu Xun, so we can assume that it won't harm him. But what if the scabbard goes bad? In any case, there is no boss in the heavenly dust that Lu Xun couldn't defeat. Fifteen minutes later, a shiver could be felt along the path. It was definitely straining the traveler. The farther he walked, the stronger this tremor became. With this frequency of vibration, Lu Xun had a hard time. The hitherto quite calm blade began to break free from the hands of its master, who at the last moment managed to grasp it more firmly. Lu Xun had no way of knowing where these scabbards were trying to escape to. As a result, the scabbard led its wearer to a strange deserted place. Lu Xun had to run to keep up with the call of the scabbard. Just why did it bring him here? The sheath kept pointing the way forward and not stopping. It looked like they had arrived at the place. Lu Xun came across a sealed coffin that stood in the middle of the forest in a deserted clearing. This coffin seems to have been the target of the sheath. Lu Xun has come to the right place. Then why did the scabbard stop? What is in the coffin? Is it a corpse? Did the scabbard mean to say that Lu Xun Yu shouldn't go there? It looks like there's something dangerous in the coffin. But then in that case, the scabbard should go on its own. Genius, isn't it? Lu Xun let his scabbards out of his hands, hoping that they would do the right thing on their own perhaps even be able to kill the boss. The sheaths were already quite large. It was time for them to learn how to move around on their own. Lu Xun wasn't going to coddle them for the rest of his life, but they were glad of it. For some reason, there was a sense of eager anticipation coming from them, as if this was going to be a long-awaited meeting for them. Lu Xun made an APT strike so that all the talismans peeled off the coffin. The defense was definitely so-so, as one scabbard managed to make a huge hole. What will happen next? The sheath was beginning to suck all the energy out of this coffin. Observing his offspring, Lu Xun concluded that his child had decided to simply devour and suck energy. It did it with such joy as if it were drinking tea and milk. This alone was beginning to make Lu Xun tense. After all, what if it was some kind of hidden conspiracy? The system has started running the hidden conspiracy living dead boss level quest. Perhaps no one will believe Lu Xun, but the hidden mission that once stumped two guilds is activated just like that. Lucian, of course, accepted this mission. If his memory didn't fail him, the living dead in the coffin should have a level 29, which meant that it was very strong. This dead man is ruthless, and Lucian will surely have a hard time fighting him. But if he manages to win, there will be no man more proud of himself than Lucian. Lucian has a slightly lower level than this living dead man, but he couldn't help but take a chance. How can he refuse this? Once he accepts and completes the assignment, it will immediately pop up. Lucian was already excited to complete this mission and receive all his rewards. In the beginning, this mission was a rumor, and there were two reasons for that. The first was that the mission was extremely difficult. No guild could handle it alone. The second is that the reward for the task is very valuable. Hardly anyone wants to share it. At the beginning of the game, yellow equipment is considered very valuable, not to mention blue equipment. Compared to the blue equipment, 30,000 points is not such a good reward. This boss was said to absorb all the yin energy stored underground, and the normal reward of heavenly dust was this. If the level of the item being obtained was high, less experience points would be given. The coffin boss has a 29th level, which in itself is considered very rare and astonishing. With Lu Xun's current strength, he was clearly no opponent. Besides, he didn't know how powerful the blade key energy was. We're still more than two years away from worldwide beta testing, and everything seems to be going smoothly. The blade scabbard made a sensation. It absorbed energy. It looks like the rest of the mission will have to be postponed for two or three years when Lu Xun is stronger. Lu never enters a battle if he knows in advance that he will lose it. There must be corpse gas around the coffin, so he couldn't get close. All he had to do was wait for the blade to suck out all the energy. There's no hurry though. Just why his sheath gave him such a strange feeling? Lu Xun still couldn't understand. Lu Xun had strange and dirty thoughts. He imagined as if Blade Qi would return to his scabbard, and she was cheating on him with the coffin. Blade thought that the scabbard was pining for him, and she was already addicted to the moistened environment of the coffin. 
Lu Xun was still faithfully waiting for his weapon, watching it feed. But it was strange, because it was already raining. The raindrops began to drip down his face, but he didn't seem to notice them. The sheath's appetite was definitely not bad, as it had been standing there for quite some time. As soon as Lu Xun thought of this, the scabbard flew away from the coffin. Right into Daddy's arms, content and fed, Lu Xun suspected that the scabbard had drained all the yin channels. But could he be wrong? Probably not wrong. What do we do now? Looks like the coffin with the living dead will be hard to stop now. Such a meal has consequences, the coffin is about to open. Lu Xun was confused for the first time, and even before the battle came, he knew it was over, for nothing could hold this dead man back. The lightning struck the coffin so hard that even Lu Xun's disciple noticed it. The Purple Lord still hadn't returned. Mo Guan was very weak, and it made him feel more scared. The coffin was starting to vibrate, trying to awaken all the energy. Being close, Lu Xun could perfectly sense the full power of this energy and aura. Even the sheath communicated that staying here was a huge mistake. But Lu Xun thought that it was alright after all. They had nowhere to go anyway. It remains to be seen what happens next. And then something expected happened. The dead man who had brought the entire game to a standstill, the one that even two guilds couldn't resist, was now in front of Lu Xun. How would our hero get out of it this time? Will he survive?